All right, all right, all right. Hello, everybody. I'm Brad. That's Mike. That's Tom. We're Dallas Geek, and Tom? we're at Madness. You know, like from MySpace. <laughs> oh. <laughs> really? What, what? Where have you been all these years? I've just been sitting here, man. Huh. Where have you been? <laughs> On Facebook. Sorry. Cool. Okay. You tried Parler yet? Thinking about it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, for those of you who did not catch the update, uh, first show of the year, we got invited out to Madness Comics over in Plano, and this is Still don't know what Madness Games and Comics. I swear, this is like the 50th time this week I've gotten it backwards. Still don't know what the hell they were thinking of <laughs> inviting us out, but, uh, you know. But, you can say hell in with that, um... Wait, Mike, can, right? We can? You doing all right? I'm good. We, yeah. can, we, we can say hell in public, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to run with this. This is Texas, so, I mean, you know. <laughs> that's, it, that's a, very a true. lot of things could be offensive. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, Brad, I, I never thought that one day would make a difference, but suddenly 2020's gone and everything is right with the world. Is it, though? That's not wood. Crap. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but uh, with that, um, how are you doing? I'm good. Uh, it, it's a little weird since this is almost, uh, what is it, 10 months since we've actually recorded in the same location. So this is, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like you didn't look so mm, last time I saw you. But I, gorgeous? Uh, no, I'm always gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, Somebody wants to sleep on the floor tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Water. <laughs> so yeah, um, we are here at Madness Games and Comics. There we go. Uh, who, uh, of which Tom is one of the wonderful employees here. If you have never heard of Madness, uh, shame on you, but we're going to fix that today. Uh, Madness is yep. one of, if not the largest uh, game and comic store in North Dallas, uh, if not all of North Texas. So it is amazing. Uh, it, it is, uh, I, I believe, Nerd Haven might be a pretty apt description. I feel like that's fair, as I'm looking out and seeing <laughs> the, the wonderful things of Gundam models, yeah. trading cards, Funko Pops, whatever the hell those plushies are. And don't even pretend like we don't know what the entire back wall of this place is uh, made of. Oh, they are Funko Pops. <laughs> which I saw like ten that I want. Oh, no. Only ten? I know. Only ten? They, well, I, I feel like you're slipping. No, it's actually probably a good thing that I came after the holiday sale. <laughs> so, Brad yeah. not encourage it. He has too many and no more shelves. Well, I don't think he understands the concept of too many. Shelves. And, yeah. You, you can <laughs> always shelves. buy more shelves. Okay. Yes. Well. Or you can make them. Man. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we do have a, a... And I know somebody that works at Home Depot, so I can get a discount. <laughs> we do have a small bit of a live audience here today, which is amazing. Uh, but, of course, uh, as we mentioned before and have continued to emphasize, please remember social distancing, masks, all necessary, because it may be 2021, but we still want you to be safe. So, Can, can we really talk about social distancing when I'm close enough to lick you? I mean... Can you not? <laughs> okay. Do it. Uh, do it? Lick it. <laughs> all right. But before we uh, dive too deep into uh, the wonderfulness that is madness, um, the always necessary shilling before we get started. Uh, guys, if this is your first chance to be able to join us, please do not forget to check us out uh, over on Facebook. Uh, like our video, follow, keep the Facebook people's oh, no, away, whatever happy. Yep. Uh, and definitely be sure to like our video and subscribe over on YouTube because the Google overlords, uh, yeah, they, they, they control everything with us. So. Uh -huh, and we let them. Yeah. They're like Skynet. Except I mean, not the cool robots. Well, to be fair, China has the real Skynet, but I, I think Google may beat them to reality. Don't get me so. on. Don't get me started on China, Brad. You said no politics. Yeah. And if no. you want to be able to check out uh, more of our interviews and live shows, but do not have time for the videos, you can always get uh, catch the audio of our show over at Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcast, and Stitcher, because we're all the places, all the time, for you. Sometimes. <laughs> but. With that. Yes, indeed. Tom, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great. <laughs> Thanks, guys. It's been awesome to see you guys come out here. Yeah, sorry for making you awkwardly sit there for ten minutes while Brad just listened to the sound of his own voice. 
I mean, that's kind of the thing here. <laughs> this is Very my good. show. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're just arm candy. And I am the tastiest of arm candy. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, uh, uh, I, know, uh, us. I gotta say, 20, well, let's just say that unnamed year of more yes. that, so go unnamed. Um, the Voldemort of years, yes. <laughs> Wait, I said the name, does that, does that jinx it? Don't do it again. Yeah, hmm? okay. okay. We don't want Beetlejuice, right? Yes, sir. Yes. No, 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 you gotta say that one three times, so right. we're good. One is fine, one okay. is fine. Okay. Right? That's how the rules work? Ah, 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 like quiet. But, but hey, no, it was great to see everybody this year coming out yeah, for a yeah. sale and supporting us here at Madison Games and Comics. I mean, it's been it's been a tough year for everybody. It's been a tough year for, for small business. Yep. But, you know, uh, we really, really appreciate everybody coming out, saying hi to us. I mean, it, it was fabulous to see everybody this year in the holiday season. So, yeah. thank you very much. And we look forward to seeing much, much more of you come this year. Our gaming space is open. We have a couple tables in here right now going, and we aren't holding any sanctioned events right now, but the gaming space is open. Everything is spaced out. You can come in, you can play. You know, we just ask that you keep your masks on. It's yeah. not a big deal, you know, but it's just something we want to make sure everybody is safe. Yeah. But definitely come in and game. I mean, that's what madness is about. It's about the atmosphere when you walk into this place. It's it's. It's the store I wish I had when I was a kid. No kidding. Right? I mean, yeah. I had to go to multiple like stores yep. when yeah. I was a kid to yep. find something like this. I mean, it, it's just, if you've not experienced it, do yourself a favor and experience it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, like we said, this place is located up in almost the middle of Plano. Uh, so, if you're familiar with Dallas, you know, the, the locals here, uh, it is uh, just north of George Bush on Custer. For the rest of y'all, uh, Google it. It's, uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you Google Maps is, is, uh, is pretty handy. Hey, better than Apple Maps. You have a computer in your pocket, you have no <laughs> What isn't better than Apple? <laughs> But, um, no, yeah, hopefully, yeah. you know, like you said, hopefully we can get some more people in here and kind of get that sense of community back, because yeah. I know that's something, that's, that's something that really took a hard hit this year with yes. with everything Very going so. on, and that's something that I always liked about this place walking in, is, is that there was always something going on, there was always yeah. a group of people doing something, and to know yeah. that, unfortunately, it took that hit uh, really sucks, Yeah, you know, just for the it community. Does. It does, so, um, but, I mean... We were able to, you know, toward the end of last year, that, that shall go unnamed, mm -hmm. we were able to bring in, you know, a couple guests, you know, and, and honestly... We yeah, didn't y'all have, um... Help me. Star Wars. Huh? Star Wars? Yeah. When there's Star Wars? The Ray Park, thank you. Which was Ray Park? Uh, Dark Maul. There you go. All right. I was going to say Snake Eyes, but that's a different franchise. What are you doing? Yeah, it's, but, Good but, boy. He was Snake Eyes. He was Snake Eyes. <laughs> So we um, had Ray Parker. I mean, it, it was uh, fabulous. I mean, everybody yeah. coming in to see Ray. I mean, he's How was that? Was that a pretty cool? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It was incredible. Okay. It was awesome. It was say, awesome. I do hear he is one of the nicer celebrities out there. Like, yes. Mm -hmm. Autograph he won't sign, nothing he won't do. So Correct. Pretty much. I'm always show Assuming off. it was, yeah. Yeah. Always yeah. the show off. <laughs> hey, but it's good. And then before that, we had uh, the Green Ranger. JD. Oh, J.D. Mo. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it was great. And yeah, you don't fun. always hear the good stuff. Everybody's always negative, right? Everybody's yeah. saying, oh, this and oh, that. And But we got a letter. Well, actually, we got a Christmas card from one of our customers up in Oklahoma City who was helping with the pandemic and, you know, was just having a terrible year. And he saw, he followed us on, on Facebook and saw that we were having Power Rangers in. And it was, it gave him something to look forward to. He sent us a Christmas card, wrote this beautiful letter to us, and sent us pictures, you know, of him and JD. Uh, uh, I mean, it was like, wow, you know? So it's those little things that we can do, and we don't even know that we're doing, but yeah. we're here, yeah, you right. know? And we provide that escape from what is sometimes a very horrible reality outside. Mm, yes, yeah. yes indeed. You know, you can come in here and you can you forget about it. <laughs> yes, yes you do. There's so many. There is, you know, I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of things that you can get lost in in this building. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, so, I think the, the coolest thing, uh, the first time I ever came in here, uh, was the fact that, I mean, 
growing up, uh, when you are exposed to like nerd movies and stuff, that you're going, oh man, I, I, I wish I had something like that uh, to be able to kind of show me the things that I, I know I want to learn about, but don't really have that. Every time you saw, it, you know, the uh, Hollywood uh, comic store uh, or game store or whatever, it always uh, looked this like this vast place of you know the, the things that you could do, and you know you never really yeah <laughs> outside of like a couple of uh, well-known examples like up in New York or uh, you know other places, there's not a lot of places that really show that as reality, but then you come here and it's like exactly what you were expecting growing up as a kid going, oh, you got your move, uh, your games over here, you got your ga uh, comics over here, the collectibles and this massive space to be able to meet other uh, people that like the same stuff you do to oh, just absolutely. hang out. Yeah, It's like absolutely. larger than life. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it's real. Yeah. It does exist. It's here. Which it's is madness. awesome. It does <laughs> exist. <laughs> But, yeah, no, I mean, so, talking about all the stuff that you guys do have uh, here, um, what is your favorite part of the store, Tom? I was say, speaking of madness, I see some madness on the table in front of us. <coughs> oh, yeah, well, you know, um, I always was into board games growing up, but it was the normal board games that kids of my generation played. You know, you played Monopoly, you played Trivial Pursuit, oh. you played those endless games that you just got tired of, and Clue, you know. Monopoly, that hey, game hey, that... Hey, 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 don't sleep on Clue. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, I wasn't dissing Clue, I just saying that was one of the few choices there were. That's right, Monopoly, that game that had every family member at each other's throat for property. It could, yeah. yes. No, there is no could about it. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen many a table uh, Monopoly, like literally. So, but I've seen knives fly like, because of Monopoly. But that's how you come together as a family. You you get together, you want to kill each other, you get completely divided for a solid three or four hours, and or then... Days. Yeah, yeah. Or days. And then when days. it's all done, it's better. You know, you, you are so much closer. Yeah, Monopoly, <laughs> the game that makes you want to be a land baron like Snidely Whiplash and And you never want to talk mustache. to your sister again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Right? But now here, I mean... Park plays people. What a deal. That's true. <laughs> It's like nobody, nobody ever landed on it, but then that one family member buys it for cheap, and then of course when you're absolutely no money in, you basically land on it and get sold into indentured servitude yeah, to I'm pay totally, off your I'm debts. Yeah, I'm totally not that person who buys up all of the orange spaces just to screw you over right before you land on free parking. So clearly, there are no hard-held stories of by any of us from from our uh, childhood. So let's, let's, let's go ahead. And, let's go ahead and move on before we start having nom-style flashbacks. Over <laughs> <the time. laughs> But yeah, uh, you, your, your game section is uh, maybe the biggest part of this whole place. Yeah, yeah it's it, it's the heart, I would say, right now, and it has been. It's the heart of madness. I mean, when you come in, the heart of the store is board games. I mean, there's everything you can imagine. Board games, card games, trading card games, dice games. It, it, it just goes on and on. It, and there's so much that you can find that you're not going to find anywhere else. And... We have our new racks. As you walk in the front door, there's two sets of racks that are feature all of our brand new games that we come out. Mm -hmm. You know, in December, November, there's a lot of releases that come out. And, and one of the ones that I found that I liked that came out this year is called Bees. It is... So, can you say that like Nick Cage in the Wicker Man remake? No. <laughs> there we go. There you go. You know, don't be afraid. You know, oh, bees, no. honey bees are your friend. Okay, never mind. Your friend. I mean, yeah, we are on YouTube, so I mean, the, it, it's required to just say it on and on. Or you can say it like the Cards Against Humanity card. Yes. Uh, so, uh, a brand new game that came out from Next Move, which yeah. also is uh, owned by Plan B Games, maker of Azul. Oh, okay. Anybody of you know yes. have heard of the Azul Summer Pavilion is stained glass. Mm -hmm. um, the thing with them, maybe you picked it up, maybe you haven't. Hmm. Next move, all of their games have four letter names. Oh. Azul, yeah. Bees, Reef. See, that's cool. <laughs> A little bit tricky yeah. that she did that. I learned something that I didn't think I would learn today. There I, you go. I huh? never actually noticed that yeah. before. <laughs> <laughs> but Bees came out 
a very asymmetric game. Mm -hmm. uh, you actually get to create the board yourself. Okay. And the goal of the game is to collect nectar. Now, having or being an amateur beekeeper myself, mm -hmm. the nectar comes in colors, mm -hmm. and nectar really doesn't come in colors. The pollen comes in colors, but hey, you know, it, yeah. it's really yeah. cool. And so as a purist, is that something that turns you off, or can you look past that? Oh, I'm past game? that. Okay. This is an awesome game. Just making sure, because I know there are, no. there are snobs out there that are like, I won't touch this because they can't. I think he was a snob. No, just wanted to, I just wanted to make sure. Also four letters. <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, you and your man's life. No, no, right now I really don't. <laughs> So, uh, back to the regularly scheduled program. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, if you're interested in bees or ever would like to learn bees, hey, maybe you come up here, you're watching the podcast, you know, I have the game here. This is my game, uh, and you can play. I can teach you, quick to learn, fun game. This is one of the games, like I said, I picked up this, this winter, mm -hmm. and I really enjoy it. So... Going along the same line, there's a couple other games that have been really fun. Uh, I'm going to pick one up that we actually do still have in stock, and we have someone in the store right now playing the game. He's playing in Automa mode, and it's called Wingspan. This game uh, is very fun. It came out last year. It's engine building. So okay. no two games are going to be played the same. Okay. Because the cards that come up, I mean, you, you have well over 100 cards. Mm. And you build your engine, mm -hmm. you lay eggs, you know, you collect food to be able to deploy your birds in different, we'll say, areas. Mm -hmm. Because certain birds, you know, are water, right? They aren't going to live in the forest. Right. Sure. Type of thing. So it's, it's very educational in the fact that each one of the cards gives you information on that particular bird. Okay. Kind of cool. You know, and the the purpose of the game is avian global domination of your opponent. Yes. Nice. Nice. <laughs> okay, so let's pass the uh, the games over game. here, and uh, let, let's uh, let's keep them coming. All right. That's cool. Um, there we go. A couple other games. So I'm going to go in the same line a wall uh, with games. Wingspan. Okay. Wingspan uh, was by Elizabeth Hargrave. She did the artwork. Okay. She okay. came out with another game this this past year called Mariposa. Okay. Mariposa is the monarch butterflies. So mm -hmm. it's all about the migration of butterflies, their life cycle from Mexico traveling up into the United States mm -hmm. and then coming back down to Mexico bringing it in. And actually being here in Texas is very cool because depending on what part of Texas you're in, you get to be, you get to see the migration of the monarch mm -hmm. butterflies. Okay. Very cool. Uh, again, you have a set board in this. You have objectives and goals that you're trying to achieve for yourself. You have objective, objectives and goals that are communal that you're trying to compete for mm -hmm. as well. Okay. The biggest goal that gets you the most points is to get your butterflies back to Mexico before the end of the season. So you play through one season and oh, okay. then the game is over. What's the time frame in terms of like length of a game lasting for something like that or like a wingspan or like a bees like are these are these games like not like monopoly where they're gonna last like four oh, or five Lord, days no. but i mean like are these gonna be like a couple hours where you're gonna oh, sit no. down and um you're gonna be able to play a, a game of bees the first one we talked about within an hour oh god within an hour uh wingspan Wingspan could push an hour, maybe a little over, depends on how many people you have playing, you okay. know, how, yeah. in, how in depth or how new someone is playing at the game. Because a lot of times the games give you a specific time, but it's, 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 it's all relative to have you played the game before, are you teaching someone to play, are there three new players and you're teaching all three of them to play. So mm -hmm. you kind of, yeah. if everybody knows the game, it's going to go rather quickly. Yeah. No so okay. these are not really... These are not the These are not games. heavy yeah. games yeah. like, you know, yeah, like we're talking about. Right. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So and I'm sure this is probably the favorite game of the Monarch. Any Venture Brother fans out there? Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, Azul, like I said, Azul comes from Plan B Games. Next move, four letters. Um, really simple game to learn, mm -hmm. fun to play, easy to play with a group of friends, easy to pick up. Mm -hmm. 
you can drink wine and relax and play Azul. Or whatever beverage of choice you have. Okay, sure. sure. <laughs> well, so it doesn't have to specifically be wine, does it? No. I mean, are you going to say no to wine? Uh oh. Depends on what mood I'm in. Sparkling cider. I mean, it's also four letters. I'm just going to throw something. <laughs> Give me something to throw. Oh, yeah. Give me something to throw. <laughs> okay. Sorry. But no, it, 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 it is a fun game. Uh, and like I say, it, it's it's great. It, it's easy to teach mm. other players to learn. Okay. And then what is the average, I guess, number of players um, that you're going to find in some of these games? Like, are they going to be like in the, the, the four player range? The typically, typically, typically right. four range. Okay. Some go up to five, some, like some you can go to seven, yeah. you know, yep, but yep, typical is, is around four. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, are these are these the kind of games? Because I'm assuming it's like one to four, or like two to four, or whatever. So, yeah. are these the games where more people better, or are that, these the games that doesn't matter how many people you have? The experience is still going to be the same. No, I understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah, uh, it's going to depend upon. I'm going to say Azul. The more you have, the better. Okay. Because you're drafting components okay. from the center of the board. Okay. To the center of the plane. Okay. So the more people you have, the more randomness you're going to have, and it's going to be a little more enjoyable. Yeah. But it still plays with two just fine. My wife and I play this all the time. This is actually the game that I introduced and got my wife to start board gaming with me. Oh, well, guys. Fly it over there. <laughs> <laughs> and then since then, I've been able to expand mm -hmm. and we, hey, you liked this one, you'll love this one. Exactly, hey, you like, hey, one, you like here. this hey, one, so I yeah. think you'll like this one. Yeah. Let's play. Right? So, yes. Then all yes. of a sudden you have her playing Risk and... <laughs> <laughs> and... Lamps are being thrown because you're fighting over Asia. <laughs> no. We're no, amazing no, 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 no. during winter, it's fine. Yeah. It's just a game. It's fun. It's it not, is never <laughs> just it, a it, game. It, it, unless it's Monopoly, a game should not be stressful. If a game is stressful, there's... There's no reason to play it. Exactly. Clearly, you've never played D&D &D with these two. Or any kind of first-person shooter. <laughs> <laughs> Show me a first-person shooter board game. That's it. Cash and guns. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, um, maybe there is, and I don't know it, because you, you know what? Maybe there is a first-person shooter board game. I don't know. Like, could be. No, so cash and guns is almost first-person shooter because you get to point a phone gun at the friend and deal their loot, potentially. So, then there's people... Dice throwing. This okay. is going to be probably your best head-to-head. -head. This is not a co-op whatsoever. All of these games okay. have been head-to-head. -head. Uh, but, but this one, you are trying to beat you down your opponent. Yes. Plain and simple. Now you're speaking my language. There Let's you go. go. And you have the variety or the choice to be different archetypes if you want to call it. Mm -hmm. This is two. This is Dice Throne Season 2 and two of the four boxes. Each box comes with two different types of characters you can play. Okay. It is a dice game. Okay. If, you, if you like dice games, you're going to love the game. If you hate dice games, stay away from <laughs> Dice Throne. Hence in the name Dice Throne. Dice just trying to kill me. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Some people don't like the randomness of dice. Yeah. Uh, I do have a couple no, gamers. It, it is not random. There is a science. Really? That's what I tell myself. That's, that's what you that, tell that, yourself. That's what I tell myself. That's yeah. what half the people in the scene say. It has equal probability, but like, you know, it, it still feels like they're trying to kill me. How many times has he failed initiative? <coughs> How many times has he failed what? Initiative. Initiative. initiative okay, initiative not so much. It's more like, I want to do this thing, and he trips on the first time he ever rolls a dice. Was a nat my one. first ever roll was a nat one. <laughs> and then the next roll he hits a, a nat twenty, so it's kind of it, his is a. His, but then, his, his but then I, I I third up I third the final boss's health with a stealth nat twenty attack. Yeah. And one throwing that. Very first game ever. It was <laughs> stupidest thing ever. So I saw I so saw his, the far end of the it, spectrum, and I saw the far end of the spectrum. It is it his his dice rolls instead of an average being like a bell curve, it has two bumps instead, and kind of goes like either it's like threes and fours, or it's like nineteens and twenties. There's really no in between for him. So you're the all or nothing now. Like you go, you go you go big or you go home, <laughs> right? Well, you're in Texas, so yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> So, you, so you, either you're going to 
successfully just obliterate your opponent, or you're going to yeah, we, get, we either we either win by forty or position. we get blown out. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So this is what dice turns all about. Florida would know everything about that one. <laughs> so in a game like this, because you said this is season two. Yeah. So can you mix and match seasons Absolutely. and everything? Okay. Yeah. So it isn't one. Season of those one where is getting a. Reworked by the publisher gotcha. uh, to be able to come out because when they did season two, they actually did it right. And oh, each one, everything you need to know about the vampire is in here. Oh, that's clever packaging. Yes, it's all about the packaging. Yes, yes. Packaging. everything you need to know about the seraph, which whoever played this last did put it in correctly. Oh. oh. There we go. There we go. Nice. Okay. okay, okay. Actually, at the bottom. Everything you need to know about the sheriff is right there. So this is everything you need. So it's it's a big packaging thing. So it's thing, easy right? mix and matching too. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You, you you yeah. The thing is, I haven't had a chance yet, but um, you can do competitive team player. So I could play. You know, you and I could be playing these two. Oh, and do and like going a, head to head. Oh, do like a two headed giant almost like a uh, match the match the gathering. Sure. Yeah, yeah, similar. Yeah, yeah, similar. But you know, <coughs> of um, course, you would bring up magic. What the hell did she just say? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's you. You realize that's like the one game that both of us are just. <laughs> oh, and it's also a four-letter word. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> Anyhow, okay. So I'm knowing a weird OCD pattern here. <laughs> That's dice throwing, very <laughs> cool. And then, you know what? <clears throat> this is Century Golem. This is the last one uh, mm. I'll talk about. Uh, Century Golem was a reskin of Spice Road. Okay. So if you've heard of Spice oh, Road. Oh, mm. okay. So this is just a reskin. It's the exact same thing as Spice Road. They just. When I say skinned it, they made it look different, right? Yeah. So your golems and you're collecting gems to get your golem and things like that. Well, unbeknownst to me, I thought it was cool because I'm very visual. I like the art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fun game. Sure. But um, what was even cooler was uh, teaching my six-year-old grandson to play. Who loves this game? Mm. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, okay, and, and we're, we're going to say this says, uh, this is 8 plus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My six year old grandson picked it up like that. He could play on his own with me. So it's more, it's just a mere suggestion. Yeah. Yeah, it is a suggestion. But, like the speed limit. Yeah. Well, that's. I mean, this is Texas, so technically. Technically. They're guys. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I will say that the, uh, the, the, Decision of which new game to pick up based on the uh, the box art kind of fits with how most new games are picked up. Uh, it, it seems like, and how most uh, new comic fans get into it. You know, you, you, you figure out what looks the coolest. A lot you of check it, it out and sure. see what happens. And, and half the time it works out. The other, eh, not so but much. You tried it. See right. what's next. But. No. You also have the folks that, that come in and we'll, we'll uh, have the board game whisperer sit here in a little bit. Yes. Um, that people will come in and say, I'm looking for a game like. Uh, okay. sure, sure. So it's like, I'm looking for a co-op game that I can play with my three friends mm. and we like, you know, yeah. space type games. What do you got for me? Yeah. So they're shopping for a particular thing that they want to look for. It, they aren't shopping for what looks cool. Right. Yeah. Right. right. So now, there are both shoppers. Yeah. Now I am noticing that on the back of all of these boxes and like and on the sides you have the little clock that says like 30 to 45 which is uh -huh. obviously like that's average time for a game. I sure. mean so when you're looking for a game what are you wanting? Are you wanting something that's going to take a couple hours so that you can sit down and actually invest the time into it or do you want something that's going to be a more quick run through like oh yeah that was actually a lot of fun now let's try something else. Yes. All right, good talk. Sometimes, like, you want, like, you know, a 30 minute game. Exactly. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I come home. Sometimes you want to, like, post up with a whole bottle of wine and play for, like, two hours. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You just say a whole it. bottle of wine. I didn't stutter. That's easy. Uh -huh. yeah, we're going to be playing Azul. 
<laughs> and not wingspan when you do that. <laughs> Uh, okay, but but yeah. the answer to that question is, what are you in the mood for, yeah. right? Yeah. It, it's when you pick up a book. Are you always going to pick up Frederick Nietzsche, or are you going to pick up Stan Lee? That's fair. Well, I mean, sometimes it, you kind of get both. Who the hell is uh, Stan Lee? <laughs> That's the one you go for? <laughs> really? Really? That's the one you go for? Yeah, it's totally. I know all the inner Madness workings of games Nietzsche. Madness, games, and comics, <laughs> Stan Lee. <laughs> I know all the inner workings of Nietzsche, but so, who is Stan Lee? So now these are the ones that, that you would, you know, that, that you're playing right now, right? Like yeah, you're, these are, yes, these are actively hitting my table right now. So I'm brand new to board games. Yes, as you give the devious <laughs> look. I don't really play them all that much. Like, do they have them separated by, like, entry level in terms of, like, hey, if you're a board games dummy or if you're new to it and you're trying to do a more casual style game, here's what you want to look for? Like, is it broken down that way here at the store, or is it... No, it is not. Okay. Actually, that is the question when you come in and you ask somebody like Kevin or Logan or Kaz, it's like, hey, I want to, you know, where you ask the question, like, I, I want to get into board games, and they're going to ask, well, what do you like? Yeah, and I'm going to say yes. <laughs> and then they're going to need to probe just a little bit more okay. to find out. Okay. Yeah. You know, do you like war games? Yes. Do you like games that look pretty? Uh, depends on the style of pretty. Right, but, 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 but yeah, seriously, yeah, yeah. though. Yeah. Th they need to have an understanding of what it is that you like, and then they're going to give you recommendations yeah. and suggestions no based on that. No and knowing that you're new to gaming, they aren't going to give you the board game site right <laughs> because that's not yeah. what you because we want you to come back right. <laughs> and not come back throwing stuff at you please yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. And, and that's honestly the the one of the big reasons why some place like madness is so truly awesome to be able to have around here because right. you know when you are trying to get into something especially uh you know uh, tabletop games um having a a any kind of resource, especially you know, uh, one as knowledgeable as most of the staff here, uh, yeah. be, uh, about each individual thing, to be able to say, hey, I, I don't know anything about this. Tell me this, and be able to have somebody in the store all around, be able to have their specialty plus general knowledge, to, uh, try to guide you through that introduction. That, that is, you don't Absolutely. get that easily most, uh, you know, most places, especially you know, if you uh, go to the cesspool that is the internet. <laughs> Please Google Love Awards. Don't 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 take it offense. What are you talking about? Uh, the internet's a beautiful, welcoming place that doesn't exclude anybody for any reason whatsoever. But I mean, cries in female. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway, um, but yeah, I mean that that's that's something that is so so helpful. Uh, like you you need that kind of resource for all the newbies out yeah. there. Like yeah. uh, otherwise, our community doesn't get the chance to grow uh, yeah. in a way that you know feels good. You know, it, it just gets awkward and. Uh, you start getting the gatekeepers and all this other stuff well, that you, you don't get uh, that nice community that you always kind of wanted and then just never got. And that's, yeah, that's actually, speaking of gatekeepers, like I will say, that was a stigma for a long time with the nerd culture and the nerd community is that they were very, like, looked down upon, like, the casuals or, like, the newbies and everything like that. And that's something that I've <coughs> never experienced walking in here. Like, it's right. like I, I can be completely, totally clueless over my head. I have no idea what the hell I'm looking for or talking about. And you're going to talk to me like I've been here on a first name basis, like this is Cheers where I walk in and everybody's, no! <laughs> but also... A dated reference for probably like 90% of our audience, but you know. Well, but exactly. So that's a staff. But then when you have the board game area, right? right? Exactly. You know, a lot of people don't know games. So it, it's like you're not sure, but you see somebody playing Wingspan, you kind of stand over and watch. You I mean, kind of watch for a couple seconds. Yeah, you kind of watch, or it's like, hey, what do you think? You can ask somebody who owns the game right there. Yeah, exactly. Who's playing the game. Right, yeah. Right? And you could even ask, hey, could I, could I play? Yeah. You know? I mean, and that's perfect, because that's what we're here for. Right. And that's what everybody is around. I mean, when everybody teaches everybody, it's a win-win for all of us. Yep. Yeah. You know? So... But, you know what, I mean, I've, uh, 
dribbled and drabbled for quite a while now. Yeah. You can continue to dribble and drabble if you want. So uh, we, we are going to have uh, a bit of a, a quick Q&A uh, at the end of each guest. So oh, no, you we, did not tell me that. No, exactly. <laughs> I did not <laughs> sign up for that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what? Yep. So if we do have any questions, from the audience, online or otherwise, uh, we can go ahead and start taking those questions. And by the way, just real quick, to the Facebook audience, um, we, we apologize for being slightly delayed. Uh, apparently, um, I messed up, and uh, I, I didn't officially hit live on Facebook till halfway through the board games. Really? Apparently. It, it, it was so now we gotta. So now we gotta you restart with you from the brief. I have to. <laughs> I have to start over. Yep, we gotta start over. So uh, we'll we'll be reposting the the whole <laughs> thing on Facebook later, so you can catch the beginning if you missed it. But hey, otherwise, hey, hey Brad, I'm I'm not the tech guy, but I would you know maybe that's not something to say in front of our guests. Maybe, so, maybe that's just something to bring up later. In fairness, it's YouTube's fault. YouTube changed the uh, the, the the whole setup and interface for live. I I am blameless. I'm just saying. <laughs> it, it, it's Everybody difficult. in this room knows that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But so. YouTube did work, so. So, huh? But YouTube did work. Exactly, because Google loves us for now. <laughs> for now. <laughs> for now. It's always for now. It's yeah, always give it a minute. It's always for now. They'll change their minds. So, but are there do any... Do we have questions? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Top selling game for oh, no. 2020. Oh. So, Liz, uh, I miss you. Uh, she asked, what was the top selling game here at the store in 2020? Top of your head. Top of my head? Yeah. Top selling game. Mm -hmm. By the way, yeah, yeah I know, group. right? Um, <laughs> I'm going to hold this one. Wings <laughs> fan. Uh, we ran through more copies of that than I have can imagine right now. Really? Okay. Yes. Nice. Uh, okay. It has an expansion, mm -hmm. the first expansion. This game actually came out last year, like I said. Uh, the first is a European expansion. It adds more cards, it just makes it a little bit bigger. Not a, no mechanic changes. Nice. December, they released their second expansion called Oceana. Okay. That actually added component and gameplay changes to it. And uh, we blew through every copy that we could get a hold of on the Ocean expansion. Cool. We still do have some base game, a wingspan. I'm not even sure if we still have the European uh, available. I'm looking over at our news shelf right now and I don't see the European out there, but we actually have this in three different spots in the store. Okay. But this is definitely by far probably one of the one of the games that walked out most frequently. Okay. So was there uh, something about that that seemed to latch on to players more than uh, some of the others? I oh, think it, at least that they said. <laughs> well, I think it had the ability because enough it garners enough backing and people playing it and people nice. recommending it mm -hmm. okay. that it just it, it it had this resurgence of everybody wanted to play Wings. Nice. Gotcha. And it's a fun game. It's also birds. Like, can you go wrong with birds? Yes. But you well, know, see, Alfred Hitchcock. I was about to say Hitchcock okay. had a whole uh, <laughs> <laughs> a whole movie set explaining that one. I mean, like. <laughs> Like California, you don't have to worry about that. We're in Texas, it should be fine, right? Sure. Right? Alright, so, so we have uh, another question over <laughs> here. Uh, sir, you, the, the person that we've clearly never met before in our yeah. lives. And we are not paying 20 bucks to ask this question. Hey. <laughs> <Why? laughs> <laughs> 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 there's money? <laughs> I'd like to see that, yeah. <laughs> your, your check's in the mail. Okay. Money's on the nightstand. Just get back to work. I don't know my address, so. Uh, I've got two, if possible. Yes, yeah. Um, all right, so one, when it comes to game tables and, you know, you want to set up for a group of friends to come in and play on the tables, how does that work exactly? Is there, like, time slots or... The game's... Good question. Good question. The game space is open when we're open. So it opens from 11 until we close, 8, 9, it, it, it's gonna, but the game space is open. Um, since we've had to reconfigure, can't really see it. You can see it, but people here can't see it. We space all the tables out. Uh, there are six chairs at each table, so for a small group. Um, and you do not have to reserve. If you, you can, if you're coming in, say, hey, I would like to reserve to make sure we I have a spot at a table. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can call in or you can, you know, do that. But it's not required. Okay. You just come in and game. Cool. Nice. All right. And, and the, the other question? Sure. Um, so, 
I see, like, amongst the games here, I see I've got these, Maricosa, Wingspan. Is this kind of your way, like, you know, everybody's kind of been inside the house. Is this your way to bring the outside in, or did you even kind of realize that? <laughs> That's funny. Jesus, that is deep. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's going to well, be I guess me. we're going there. Cool. <laughs> and that's me because I'm I'm an outdoorsy person. No. So I like games that are like this. So yes, you know, wingspan, butterflies, bees. I mean, that's... I grew up outside. And like I said, I, I'm an amateur beekeeper as well. So when the bees game came out, I read about it. I'm like, I got to have this game. Right? You know... Wingspan, again, a lot of what I'm attracted to is artwork. I'm initially pulled in by artwork of a game. It has beautiful artwork. Now, does it pass step two? Is it going to be worthy of playing? It can't be just pretty, right? Is it got mechanics to it that are going to be challenging that I'm going to look forward to and I like? Gotcha. I'm going to be honest, step three right now for me, since I can't game with a lot of other people, is... Will the wife like this? <laughs> <laughs> will I get to play this now? Or will I just have to yeah. buy it and wait for it? If I'm going to buy it and wait for it, I'm not going to buy it right now. But there, I, I do have games that um, I'm looking forward to getting out and playing with other people. Yes. So I, I mean, guess my question would be, is, does it matter if she likes it? Yes, because then she won't play it. Well, but you can still play it with other people. I can, but then it's finding other people to come in and play it with. That's true. And, and imaginary right, friends right, don't right, count, Mike. Right. I'm sorry. But the, the imaginary friends always count. <laughs> well, in, in the, a lot the of games... The leprechaun in your bedroom doesn't... You leave Sven matter. out of this, okay? Well, Sven, I thought it was like McLaren or something. No, that's a different one. That's true? Yeah. Fair enough. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> a lot of games do have what they call an automa or a single player. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can do that way. Not all games, though. Right, right, that sure. Right, right. Wingspan is, and like I said, we have a gentleman here that's playing the automa version right now. So, uh, but not all games. You can't play Azul by yourself. You can't play Century Golem by yourself, right? Yeah. So, gotcha, right. gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Well, what else, man? Uh, I. That's it on line two. So I think uh, we are good. Okay. Great. Uh, so, so, so you no longer time. have to sit here and right. entertain us. So I'm going to turn this over to uh, one of our staff. His name is Kevin, mm -hmm. and he's been around for a good while. Yeah. And he's going to uh, geek out everything Star Wars for you. And, you know, <laughs> I just talked about board games, but, you know, we have a good third of the store that's, you know, toys. Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm sure they're, they're action figures and or collectibles, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All of the above. Yep. All of the above. <laughs> and we still have, we have Ray Park. Since you mentioned we had Ray Park here, we have signed pieces from Ray Park. That's good. Yeah. I'm out of here. I'm Thank you, sir. We do appreciate it. You. Yes. Thank you for taking the time. Everybody, up. clap. <laughs> Louder. Well, I mean, this is Mike. Of course he's needy. He, he needs that outward approval. Get some water real quick. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get external validation, right? I mean, that's, that's isn't like, that kind of why we're all nerds here, that we, we needed that external validation, so we found this place? No. Oh, no, see, I'm a nerd because uh, my father was a nerd, and I grew up seeing all the cool things he was doing, and kind of just got brainwashed into that. Like, uh, So like, the traditional Star Wars explanation, got it. Yeah, pretty much exactly <laughs> that. I, I, I'm you know, know, like my father. We, we, have, we have a house... Uh, you know, a nice big house. And, uh, it was it was pretty good. It was. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Yes, it was. <laughs> Don't encourage him. No, hey, I'm, hey, I'm raising my own uh, little nerd at home, and dang it, you really didn't it, expect this, this that kind of a pull from a man who has got that mask on. <laughs> <laughs> nah, like, it's fair. I mean, to it's be fair, fair my it's son's name is Luke, Luke well, uh, and yeah. he's already been given his first lightsaber. Well, uh, yeah, uh, you got uh, At a year and a half. So I mean, oh yeah, and by the way, probably better with it than you are. First time, uh, first time he grabbed it intentionally without, you know, me, me encouraging him, was in the middle of the new hope. So, you know, I mean, I'm clearly doing That's something it. right. Yeah, okay. So he's clearly going to be <laughs> a Bond villain. The thing is, if you're playing a new hope like 24/7, of course, that would be. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> On the first viewing of it. Okay. Uh, granted, he had been introduced to Rebels before. So Picks or it didn't happen. Got the idea, but yeah. Picks or it didn't happen. <laughs> So yeah, uh, hi, I'm Kevin. Uh, I've been working here at Madness for just about 10 years now. And uh, like I said, my, my dad has, was actually taking me to this store back when it was 
significantly smaller and significantly younger. Yes. And uh, I've been coming here until I started working here. Nice. And yeah, Star Wars is something that me and uh, the boss man Chris have been bonding over lately with uh, a lot of Mandalorian stuff. Ooh, so nice. Yeah, he, he definitely was like, come in, geek out about Mandalorian. Yes, let's. Because um, there's some. We actually like saw they put up some big yeah. like uh, cosplay helmet, and I was like, "Hoberg, you need to buy one for me. Make, yes. make sure the store gets an extra one on top of it just for me." And then he got one for himself, and we're gonna be yes. playing with those as soon as they come in. We're excited for those. I, I, yeah, I, I, if I had the early access to ordering for that stuff, I, I would abuse the heck out of it. Oh, it, it gets <laughs> abused. It, it, it's very much whatever something is like, you know, teasing, it's like, Homer, what, what's the line on that? Oh, there? Yeah, yeah, get, uh, two, please. <laughs> I'm an employee? <laughs> abuse that privilege. <laughs> or, order extra ones. Right. Like, it's your job. Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Move on! <laughs> Oh, that, that's pre-orderable? Let me uh, jump on I'm that. I'm be the first person to put money down on that. <laughs> but no, I mean, yeah, so the uh, we, we mentioned that the, the back of the store, like the entire back of the mm -hmm. store is nothing but pops, but the uh, the collectibles uh, along with it, um, there there is a massive amount of Star Wars memorabilia mm -hmm. back there, uh, which I... That, that is amazing, especially uh, the classic stuff, you know, the, the like late 90s, early 2000s uh, stuff. And if you want to go to like the classic classics, you've got stuff up in the front uh, display mm -hmm. case, which, awesome. Uh, but I mean, I yeah, you, there's definitely a very large Star Wars presence here. Yes. Yeah, it, it's almost like one of the two people who makes all of the business decisions <laughs> is obsessed with that and has so much of his house dedicated to that that he ran out of room and had to start selling it here. It's definitely totally not anything related to exactly that. It, no, so. it's completely different. There's, there's no reason we have so many things other than the fact that they uh, are his collectibles and toys. Yeah, nice. So I guess I'll just go ahead and be that guy. Sure, sure. Uh oh. oh Sequel God. trilogy or prequel trilogy? Well, unfortunately, I am a bit of a younger person. Uh huh. So I actually, while I did was introduced very young to the original trilogy, uh -huh. I did watch the prequel trilogy right as I was at the target audience age. Sure. Mm. So I do have an appreciation for it, but I do understand why people don't like it, and also I don't like Jar Jar. So. You know, I, I'll, yeah. I'll take a hard middle ground in that I can appreciate stuff that has a beginning, middle, and end and had a plan all the way through for all three movies. Sure. Not necessarily the bestest of plans, not necessarily a perfect execution of the plan, but there was, there was a, a story that was told, and I don't think it was all that bad. So do you subscribe to the Darth Jar Jar theory? I I'm going to hit you with this damn water bottle. I personally <laughs> enjoyed the hell out of that theory. I get a lot of fun thinking about it. We shall rise. Uh, uh, unfortunately... Did you say we shall rise? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. That's it. Apparently we stumbled onto an organization here. We stumbled onto a Darth Jar Jar. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. I mean, there's always two, so I mean... There's, yeah, there you go. There's your second one. There's the second one, yeah. <laughs> I have, I have to wonder what kind of master Jar Jar would be. Like, I feel like he got on your nerves so one. fast. Or a genius one to have never let on. Exactly. Uh, listen, like I said, I enjoy it. It's a good idea. It's a nice idea. It, it's very, um, it, it, it's very creative, and I think that there definitely is some evidence behind it. But I think it's more just people looking for something and yeah. looking for hope where there isn't sure. any. Um, sure, sure. But that doesn't mean it's not fun, and, that, and that's part of the big thing about about Star Wars and, and a lot of other big nerdy stuff is that there's stuff that you can find enjoyment out of, of course, regardless yeah. of what was there or not. Like, like there's people who will go in and and watch every episode of Star Trek a million times and find all the little things that like, mm -hmm. oh, this little plot yep. thing. Yeah. And, and it's like, no, there wasn't really a thought behind it other than, oh, that prop was just easily available, and they put it there. <laughs> we just forgot to take it yeah, out of the scene. Yeah. I actually, uh, I, um, at, at my, my father's house in his Star Trek collection, he has something that was technically pilfered from the uh, Deep Space Nine set. Okay. Um, he uh, had a friend who got to go on set, 
and was like, can I have something? And somebody just took something from the bar and handed it to him. That's dope. And was just like, awesome, I'm going to give this to my buddy. <laughs> and uh, that caused some continuity errors that I think they had to do some reshoots for. So I'm not sure if you can, in any of the final episodes, you can That's actually see hilarious. the thing. But if you can, it's that a blue, hilarious. like, coffee pot triangle looking thing with uh -huh. a black yes. top. Uh -huh. If you ever see that in the bar, that's sitting at my dad's house. That's so, um, I love don't, it. I just don't like put it. too much thought into the fact that it disappeared other than my dad's a nerd and his friend got a chance to visit like, that. I just, I just love, like, I'm picturing right now just the, like, in my head, just like some personal assistant, like, oh, nobody will miss this thing. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it was a weird <laughs> coffee pot thing that was just sitting in the background. Who cares if it knows? Somebody in continuity noticed and they did some reshoots. <laughs> you know, or so I've been explained to. So. Yeah, you know, and, and if, uh, you know, Universal, Viacom, uh, or whoever it is that uh, officially is the, the parent company that owns Star Trek these days, uh, it decides to invest the, uh, you know, Disney-level money uh, into Star Trek, like, you know, Disney has for Star Wars, they can always go back and digitally add it back in yeah. for whatever. Like, yeah. they, you know, uh, Mandalorian. Yeah. Uh, this most recent season. Oh uh, yeah, no, we got some. Uh, we got some really cool stuff. Uh, I, I don't know how deep we're going to go on the spoilers. Did, oh, well, oh, did, we're going you, deep. Oh, oh, actually, did, did you hear the deal about uh, the uh, crew member that you know made the accidental appearance? Yeah. What was it like yeah. episode three or yeah, four? Yeah, well, uh, and t-shirt guy. Yeah. Like a week yeah, afterwards, they finally yeah. went in and digitally took him out of the scene. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, if you're gonna have the uh, if Star Trek gets that kind of money to go back in and do stuff, who knows what we can now? Do. Now, in defense <laughs> of the director of that episode, Carl Weathers, it is hard to see an extra on set when you're being killed by Ivan Drago. <laughs> <laughs> That's a poll. <laughs> that, 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 all, all, all the people you're waving to, yeah. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Uh, but no, I was spoiler like, alert 30 years ago. Yeah. But it, it, it's it's so funny that those kind of things can still like fall through the cracks. Yeah. And, and it's and, and people are like, oh my god, how do they make these mistakes? It, uh, I've done some editing room stuff. I've done some back of the house production things. Yeah. When you got, you know, a billion and a half hours of footage for mm -hmm. two scenes, yeah. you're going to take the shot that looks good when they're shooting, and you're not really going to care that there's somebody in the background. Or just very honestly, like, that's that's something that you could very easily overlook just oh, yeah. because you're focusing on... I mean, I, wa here. I watched and the episode twice. And there's a dude twice. 15 feet behind him. Yeah. Well, I even showed y'all, because, like, I, we finished watching the episode, and I got on to, like, read thoughts and whatnot about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah geeking out about, I think y'all were having a long, long discussion about lightsabers, and how they get their colors and whatnot. Oh, yes, and yes, bleeding. I was yeah. like, huh, and so I'm sitting there fast-forwarding it, trying to go frame by frame, and it was literally like two frames back to back to yeah. see it. Yeah, it was, it was literally was like, like a, <laughs> gone. And so yeah. someone had to have noticed it, like, just barely seen like his shoe, because if you actually watch it, like, there's a blaster shot that goes across the screen that covers him up, yeah. and then dissipates, and then you can see him, and yep. then they keep shooting, and he's gone. Well, this is the age of the internet, so well, all things thing, are seen. Like, it was literally a, a minuscule moment. Yeah. So, like, if you're yeah. sitting there watching it, like, in real time, like, oh, yeah, the shot looks good. Moving on. Yeah. Yeah, you're definitely you're it. definitely not watching that corner for the for yeah, that, exactly. that shot, right? <laughs> like, you, like, like, you just happened to just... Yeah. Did I just... That was a tennis shoe. No, I, I, I'm, 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 like, the ghost in the window of, like, Three men and a baby. Yeah, like. and, and I mean, you got to remember uh, the the big difference for editing of a show versus a movie is that the amount of time that you have to try to get through editing on a show so it can get out for broadcast, even in, uh, today in the day of uh, days of streaming, um, you don't have the same amount of time per scene that you would a movie that, you know, you might have three or four years to try to get through right. and go back and back and back. Exactly. Uh, you know, some things just kind of get through on uh, shows. It, it it happens. I yeah. mean, uh, go back and rewatch the original Star Trek uh, or even uh, more, go back and watch the original, uh, like, first season of Doctor Who. I mean... Doctor what now? <laughs> Wow. Uh, don't get me started on that. I mean, you, oh. you're you're going to see things that just they didn't even himself. bother. Uh, exactly. Thank you. Yes. It, yeah. it's, I, it's Listen, like I'm not like a, a snob sorry, or a sorry. purist or anything, but like <laughs> really, because that look time. on your face would suggest otherwise. Well, it's just like you're, you're, you're doing something like this, <laughs> sorry, and like you've not time. seen a Inspector Space Time. Inspector Space Time. My bad. 
Yeah, he hasn't. The inspector and his like, trusted constable. Like, you haven't even seen, like, Blink or anything? Like, you never, like... Oh, no, I You think have bad it. friends. They gotta show... They gotta, like, strap you down to a chair and show you a couple good episodes. Wait, I have bad friends because they don't strap me down to a chair and force me to do something against my own will? Yes! yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, you're, you're, I, I, I clearly am slacking on the job. It is for your own good. It is. I mean, like... <laughs> now like, you, you don't gotta, you don't like gotta watch every episode. <laughs> you don't gotta love it. Now like, you get it. But... <laughs> Yeah, but you're gonna watch every episode ten it times. If you watch every episode, and we're yeah, gonna no, make you love it. Exactly, you will love it if you watch every episode. I mean, he that is really literally bad. the definition of the anime fandom. Uh, and since you're already part of that, mm, I mean, I feel yeah, like this should just be second nature. Yeah, yeah if, you, if you sat through three million and a half episodes of, of One Piece, you can sit through like seen an episode. episode. <laughs> oh, good, because I haven't either, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> never done One Piece, never done Naruto. What, 956 episodes yeah. now? Yeah, that, that's, that, that's about 950 too many for me. <laughs> like, if it was a six-episode show, I'd watch it. <laughs> Looks, it, it. It's goofy enough that I'd be set through six episodes. Sure. But 900? Okay. Wow. <laughs> like, uh, I think okay. I've got better things to do with my I got board games yeah. to play. I got Star Wars to watch. <laughs> You so, do have Star Wars to watch. Now, there is one thing I, I do have to point out. Uh, the massive comic uh, section uh, over here, and especially the, the trades. Um, within all of that, the fact that you guys still have uh, some of the old Dark Horse Star Wars uh, trades uh, is wonderful to me because aside from uh, certain places online, it is so, so hard to be able to find those anywhere still that uh, has, like, you know, more than maybe one or two in stock, if you're lucky. Yeah, no, it, it's uh, it, like I said, Star Wars is definitely a big part of one of the owners, and uh, and I think a, a big philosophy, even like near the beginning, before I, like I even started shopping, was was get stuff, you know, have stuff, mm -hmm. and, and 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 hold on to it, and make sure that like if we have 300 copies of this book, have, have 10. And then, yeah. and then in a couple of years, have ten more. Like, like there's stuff that I know that we've had for a long time that we've like, no, we just we'll, we trickle it out slowly. We don't have 300 copies on the shelf. We'll have five, and when those five sell, we'll put five more out. And that kind of like acquire stuff and 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 space it out has let us keep stock on things that just there isn't stock anywhere. Right. Yeah. And and it, it's it, it really has been stuff that's letting us pay off and letting us you know come through COVID as well as we have and come through like yeah. the, like you said like there's 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 very few places that have any let alone a lot yeah um, yeah because I mean we've uh, we, we've had the, uh, the the privilege to be able to talk to uh, you know uh, different comic artists and uh, even other uh, you know some of the other comic stores around here uh, and like it was brought up uh, when we uh, interviewed um, over at Doc's uh, it, you know, it's definitely come up a lot when we've talked to some of the uh, the artists and the writers. The margins that most uh, comic book retailers have to run on uh, because of the deals that the publishers uh, have out there versus what the actual uh, publishers themselves get and everything. It does make it a hard business to oh. be in. And, I mean, as a fan, it's not something that you really think of very often, but to know that, you know, there are options uh, for how to be able to keep going as a business, and you uh, it's not just that depressing, you know, well, I mean, I, I know they were going to every stereotype, but uh, that, that Big Bang Theory version of the comic book store where, you know, uh, having the comic book store is just the most depressing thing in the world, but dang it, we're going to have it. Uh, I mean, the, the fact that it is possible to actually do well and enjoy the experience of having a comic book store, that's that's nice. So, yeah, it, it's good to be able to hear how everybody uh, goes about trying to keep the customers happy, keep themselves going, and uh, make their whole shopping experience unique for people. Yeah, and, and, and a big part of it is the community, which I know Tom hit on a bunch, is, is it really was build the community, and like, and that includes other stores, that includes uh, like having people come in, that has people coming in and playing games, that come people playing and, and reading and asking our opinions on comics and things like that, but it's also like, it's it's about making sure that you're not just a comic book store, and that's something that like my friends who talk about Big Bang Theory is like, oh yeah, you work at the comic book store, like that guy, uh, what what Stewart? Yeah, hey, Stewart, his name. Yeah. Um, been a while since I've seen the show. Never watched an episode, so I'm. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's it's okay. It's a good show. It's not great. 
Um, the D&D episodes aren't the best. Though. Yeah, the D&D episodes are good. <laughs> yeah, are they awesome. better than Community's D&D episode? No. Uh, I'd say and probably not because no. they're not they're not high as high budget. Yeah. Okay. The, the Christmas one where he does his Nick Cage impression. That that is fair. Fantastic. No, that that is fair. Uh, but still, not good. Well, I mean, again, not as high budget, but still fun. Yeah. No, it, 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 it's a, it's a low budget. It's a you know a sitcom rather than like a high budget. Yeah. Show. Yeah. yeah. But but like you see you see the comic book story and thing like that, or even like in like the Simpsons, like the comic book guy or whatever, and like yeah. he's got like his little shop with just comic Worst books. Worst episode ever. Exactly, and <laughs> and it's and it becomes this like oh it's a comic book shop, and and madness and and a, and a lot of the other successful stores, whether here or other places in the world or the country, aren't just comic book stores, right? Because right. And, and it's not that like comic books aren't like you know profitable or, or amazing or fun, sure, because they are, yeah. Um, but it's like. You, you run into situations like this year where comics had to shut down for mm -hmm. a couple of months and there were no new comics yep. for a couple of months and if we were just a comic book store we would have no new product for a couple of months and, and regardless of what we previously had in stock yep. no new product for three months is the end it's usually not a good thing um, yeah but yeah. because we have such a huge board game, because we have all these cool Gundams now, because we had we had all the Magic singles that were now sitting where they were because we sold them all, um, uh -huh. like because we had all the RPGs, because we had all the Star Wars collectibles, because we had all the signed stuff from guests coming in, mm -hmm. like we were able to make up in any one area that's that's not doing so hot, yeah. and it let and it also lets us build that community. It lets us have a little bit of something for everybody and, and and that's kind of I think why they asked me to be on here is because I am into the board games I'm into the comics I'm into the toys I'm into the magic like I grew up with all of with access to a store like this and got hooked on all of it and there is a little bit of something for everybody here oh, and, absolutely yeah, and, yeah. That, and that's definitely again harkening back to communities like they're, they're the Gundam guys that come in We'll, we'll talk with the magic guys, and they're yeah. like, "Oh, well, maybe I'll pick up some Gundams." And we got some magic guys that got into Gundams. Like, we got some Gundam guys that got into Gundams. Magic. Who doesn't people love who don't giant know that robots there. beating the crap out of each other? <laughs> people who don't know that they're there. People come in all the time and not know that there's this many board games that have ever existed, let alone exist right now. Right. Because I think it's, it's literally you're, you're sorry. Chess you? checkers, sorry, clue, yeah. monopoly. Yeah. Uncultured swine yeah. is what I'm hearing. Scrabble. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, even uh, more than that, you got the uh, the RPG section, and I mean, everybody's heard D and D because you know the news. Uh, th thank you, 80s. Uh, but um, I mean, looking at the variety of even that and the uh, what, what all you can get into for, it, and it's not just your, uh, your your medieval style stuff, but you have your Star Citizens, you have uh, your Star Wars, you have you know, even stuff that's more like modern time, you know, uh, running a business uh, kind of <laughs> thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rick oh, and Morty. And there's the Doctor Who RPG. There's like there, there's like uh, there's a the labyrinth RPG. Yeah, exactly. There, there's a and there's there's companies like Fantasy Flight that that put out like generic RPG systems like Genesis and then license that out to other companies or buy the licenses yep. for Star Wars or or Rick and Morty or whatever. Mm -hmm and put that theming on there and it's essentially the same game but with a little bit of a twist that lets you then go through and play in the world of your own fantasy like yeah. whether it's Star Wars whether it's Doctor Who whether it's traditional fantasy settings whether it's Magic the Gathering whether it's Gundam stuff like, yeah. the, the, the fact that it is just a big open world to explore across all the different things again builds that community lets everyone get to play in their own way and have fun and share that experience of like no, I got the nat twenty, and I, you know, thing. Yeah. I, I rolled the four plus four on my six, and like they just and just just opened the door that should have been closed and saved all of us. Yeah. Like there's right. so many stories to tell, so much fun to be had. Yeah. And you just gotta get your toe in the water, and whether that toe in the water is, oh man, I watched those Gundam shows when I was a kid. There's a Gundam RPG. I'll play it. Oh man, yeah. I heard about Doctor Who. It's like science and stuff. So it's, but I like science. Like I'm, a, you know, I'm going to school to be a, a, a scientist myself. Go, go dip your toe in that. Like, yeah. Or like there's something for everything. And also I play D &D. Exactly. <laughs> you, or, or, or you see that, like, you know, like the indie shows are getting really popular. Critical Role and yeah. Dimension 20 and all that other stuff are really cool stuff that yeah. are opening the door. People realizing, no, wait, there's there's so much cool stuff here past the stereotype of like, oh yeah, they're playing in the basement watching, you know, with with robes on. 
Yeah, and, and then the fact yeah. that, you know, thanks to TikTok, you have the massive section of D&D creators on there that uh, have introduced mm -hmm. the whole idea of it to a, a whole new section of, uh, you know, players or potential players just by trying to show how much fun you can have. Yeah, so. and, and, there's, and I wish I remembered the guy's TikTok handle, but he was doing a really cool thing where he was filming him and his friends in describing what D&D combat was like. So he like mm. had a like taped five foot square that sure. he was standing in and showing like, this is oh, what you do. Yeah. And yeah, this is yeah, yeah, like, yeah. oh, and then oh, also these last 20 videos that I made, here's because it's all one round of combat, here's what it actually looks like. And he just edited it so it was all together happening simultaneously. That's and it was just cool. like, I was like, that's such, a, it's such that's an really awesome cool. yeah. series. He's like, this is why you can miss yeah. a five foot square. <laughs> Because five feet is yeah. huge. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like I know your mini takes up the whole thing and probably a little bit more, but it's, it's like this yeah. is five feet. Like yeah. yes. Like it, it's it, it was really cool to see that visual of someone who's been playing the game forever and being like, I have such a clear idea of what's happening even in my own imagination now because I've seen those and right. this. Yeah. People have been playing D&D for like 50 years, and no one's done that. Yeah. yeah. And right. this, this guy on TikTok was like, wait a minute, no one's done that. I'm going to do it. Right. And genius. Yeah. It, it explains a whole uh, new uh, a whole new side of things. And, I mean, you know, uh, going even further than that, you got, um, you know, in the, the games uh, section over here, you got uh, Star Wars Armada uh, trying to explain that, uh, especially if you have a hard time explaining a 5x5 five five square in D&D. <laughs> Trying to explain Armada and how that so works is the whole. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that it. You'd only travel 85 degrees. Yeah, it's degrees. Like, it, it, I mean, it, it's it's fun to be able to have all the different uh, gaming variables that you can uh, try to play with uh, and everything, but yeah, it can get complicated. So. Yeah, no, it, it's definitely a, a big old world that, and, and looking at things like, uh, looking at especially like Armada and X-Plane, where it's like you're dealing with not only just, you know, vast amounts of 2D space, you're also dealing with 3D space, and it's hard to represent that with a couple of models, and yeah. they do a good job of it, but it is theater of the mind, even when you have models, exactly. and, yeah. and and seeing that kind of creativity in, that, in, in things like that is really, really fun. Okay, yeah. well, okay. now that we're done with that uh -oh. let's get to what we actually brought you on oh god <laughs> star wars oh. star wars all right so how about that gigantic spoiler uh how about how about uh how about luke showing up that was oh my god that was yeah that was where we're i'm sitting there on my couch with my roommate watching it and we're sitting there and it's like oh one x-wing we're saved and grogu looks at the i'm like yeah. one x-wing and we all know what that means. i was like i'm sitting there and can, do you have the sense? Do you have the sensor button set up, ready to go? Hang on, we gotta, we gotta. In theory, brace for tech. You see, it should work. <laughs> and, uh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, so we're so we're so yes, yeah, so we're sitting there and it's and it's like the the one X wing and then it's like uh, and nobody's saying anything. I'm like, it works. Okay, you good? Yeah, good. <laughs> they're not gonna do what I think they're about to do, right? Well, I was, I was, like, and then you see him coming off, like, and it's just the back of him in the robe, and then you see the glove, and I'm like, get the fuck out of here. So here's the crappy part: is that that was completely spoiled for me. Oh no! Someone had posted; it, they didn't say directly mm -hmm. on Facebook, though. <laughs> they said, "Holy love of Skywalker!" The last episode was great. And I was like, "You've got to be kidding me!" I know exactly, exactly. what's about to happen. Yeah, happens. yeah. That's so that's while he's in there freaking out, like, I'm internally going like, oh, Wish yeah, I could have enjoyed this. this. <laughs> it's cool. Like, I really wish I could be, like, you know, freaking out like he is. But, like, you know, it's okay. Yeah. It's cool. And the whole thing like, comes down and it all came back. Yep. Anyways. I was just <laughs> like, yep, you see him walking and he's... Yeah, yeah, oh my god! The glove and the lightsaber, yeah. you see that? See, the, like, even, uh, even then, because I just was so disbelieving that that was going to happen, yeah. I was like, oh, they got Adam Driver to come in and be young... Kylo like Ren. Solo, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was like, oh, this is going to be kind of And then you're cool. like, wait, does the time like, frame line but I, was sitting, but I was sitting there, it's just like, yeah, I don't remember where exactly in the time frame this is. Yeah. Right. But at the same time, it's like, if they go through this whole thing, and they have the glove tan, and they have the lightsaber, and they're doing all this stuff, and it's just like the freaking scene from Rogue One, mm, and it's yeah. not Luke, I'm going to be disappointed. Yeah, it I'll be cool to see, too. like, young Kylo, but... Yeah. yeah. 
But it was just well, like, like, and then they even like. I'll well, so the, the the frustrating thing for this entire season for me was that season one I was able to get through, and you know, minimal spoilers. This season, yeah. uh, especially because you know, for the sake of the show, we follow so much nerdy news. Yeah. Every episode of this season was spoiled for me uh, within uh, like an hour of the release. The f- season finale came out. I thought, okay. I'm, I'm not going to pay attention. Deleting anything. all social media <laughs> accounts. No, no, not doing it today. And literally an hour before I sat down to watch it, I just got onto my phone, checked out uh, some what I thought was completely non-entertainment news headlines because, you know, I, I was trying to be good. And the first thing it? popped up yep. was news uh, story with him as the thumbnail. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah, but it was for an outlet that I thought was, uh, since they do a lot of like random entertainment theories, I figured, oh, so th- this is like uh, trying to theorize something based on like the ending or whatever for next season. And then the scene started getting, uh, you know, coming up in the show. I'm like, wait, it was real? <laughs> no, it was so close. Punch your monitor, throw yeah. your phone. But no, so that's close. it's it, well, and the cool thing too was all of the kind of I guess fake breadcrumbs that they dropped throughout the season to let you think that it could have been anybody else, like yeah. Yeah. Ahsoka looking for Grand Moff Tarkin, like holy shit, that, like they could tie this into Rebels or Thrawn. Oh, oh, sorry, no, 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 Thrawn. And they I'm can tie so this into Rebels, and we can be like, like well, maybe it's maybe it's going to be Ezra coming, and yeah. like, we're going to get a tie into Rebels because Filoni did Rebels in Clone Wars, and Filoni's doing this, and like, holy and crap, was, everything's going to be tied together. There was that other but, uh, pilot that kept popping up in random episodes throughout yeah, the season. Yeah, yeah. you going, oh, maybe oh, it's yeah, him. Yeah, 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 but like, now what? what it would, if it would have been two X-Wings, I would have been like, oh, cool, the New Republic's about to show yeah, up in yeah, like yeah, Force like, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, it was like one ships are going to jump out of light speed and just absolutely deck them. Like, let's go. Yeah. you're like, one? No, it was even cooler than yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, the other thing too is I kind of wanted to get into this a little bit is and we'll keep it short because you know there is a yes, time yes. limit uh, for each guest that we don't want to you know so uh, is, Bogart your time. Yeah. So. Is is the almost Marvel like universe that they're about to create with Star Wars, with all of the series that they announced and the films and everything like that. As somebody that grew up on Star Wars, as somebody that's, because I I never really read the comics or the books or anything like that, so when Disney bought it and then retconned everything, it wasn't a big blow to me like it was to this guy or to somebody like you. Oh, I got my own gripes about that. But for them to kind of bring that sort of expanded universe back in a different medium, like, is that something that you look at and you're like, hey, that's really cool? Is that something that you're you're almost bitter about because they sacrificed everything that came before the new trilogy? And, like, like what is your mindset on that? Because, like, I sat there and it's like Rangers of the New Republic. Um, you're getting... Uh, Rogue Squadron. Quadrant. You're getting um, Cassian Andor. <laughs> you're getting Troopers. Like, you're getting all of these different things that are going to theoretically <laughs> branch out and expand and explore the galaxy. Like, is that something that super excites you, or are you like, well, shit, I've been reading that for, like, the last 15, 20 years. Like, what? If you ask me when that, when they said, oh, yeah, bye to all that old stuff, yeah. I was furious. Yeah. Um, I was mad that we lost Grand Admiral Thrawn. Mm-hmm. I was extremely mad that we lost Karen Travis's amazing Republic Commando series mm-hmm. oh, um, yeah. because they retconned how the clones behave for the Clone Wars show yeah. um, and, and how Mandalorians behave for the Clone Wars show. Yeah. I boycotted Clone Wars for a very long time because of that, because they, they really yeah. killed my favorite series. Yeah. Um, seeing how awesome Mando has been, mm-hmm. seeing the world that they're willing to create, and mm-hmm. seeing how, how how much heart is in like stuff like Rebels and, and, and going yeah. back and actually yeah. watching the Clone Wars stuff. Like, I think we're I think we're in good hands. I'm excited to see where it goes. I think that if the same kind of passion and love for the world and not just the Jedi and yeah. the Sith, yeah. like the, the world itself, yeah. I think if we have that same passion going forward, we are going to see some amazing stuff. Yeah. We are going to see some amazing, amazing things from a bunch of different creators and a whole new world of creativity that we're going to see yeah. and opportunities. Same time, let me have the end of the Karen Travis books. 
please. Yes. yes. If anyone out there with decision making purposes ever sees this, please let her finish. Well, we do have that poll at Lucas, so we can probably. <laughs> please. Yeah. So the the one thing that uh, I mean, I I understand that you know Disney is very specific about trying to not water down their properties. So any thoughts of at least now going back to the old canon and trying to complete any stories there just uh, that, that's not even in their thought process it, maybe it could be someday but definitely not now I understand that um, but I mean yes it, I, I think the thing that is getting me the most excited right now uh, that we're finally getting that I, I think every big Star Wars fan had wished uh, for so many years is the multimedia experience that we're going to get with the High Republic stories, be able to finally have that, okay, so we ha we can have the stories in the comics and the books, and now uh, at least one show, maybe two, depending, uh, and uh, possibly a movie at some point, all connecting together into a, a genuine connected story arc that we always wanted because it was something cool, but we knew we were never going to get. Yeah, right. So to see that as a, a possibility now, uh, and to see what else they can do with that is really nice. Yeah. And honestly, yeah, I was always one of the Jedi fans, but to see how much of Star Wars has been given now to the non-Jedi parts of the franchise to try to give fans more whether I've liked every aspect of it or not, once again, that's something else that we would never have gotten before, that now we get a more fully fleshed out universe in mediums that more fans are going to see, not just the hardcore fans. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, so, it's kind of nice. So what you're saying is that Disney and J.J. Abrams saved Star Wars. Got it. Whoa, 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 Listen. and Barbara. That's it. As I think you're really forgetting something that is important. What's that? Feige saved so much in terms of nerd culture, proving that a Marvel gigantic cinematic universe could work. That could work, and people would keep coming back, and people would come into it. They get new people every time. And the movies would just get better. Yep. And, and like the fact that they're all having, they could, you know, like, like, like when I saw Black Panther for the first time, oh. like I've been a Mar Spider Man fanboy, Marvel fanboy for a long time. Yes. Black Panther has never been big in, in Marvel for yep. what for whatever reason. Yep. And then they freaking have uh, 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 Mbaku, who's oh. like. <laughs> an F-list villain for yep. a B-list hero, yep. and then they come out and make him like one of the best parts of that movie yep. because they just like no, make good characters, make a good place. Well, and people come. The people entire universe it. was kicked off with a B-list level. Yeah, hero exactly. With Iron, Iron Man, Man. No, yeah, like, no one Iron like, Man was never a top-flight, top-selling Marvel character. <laughs> yeah, and they bet the entire universe on him. And it worked. <laughs> you, you come out with you, you let the creativity show. You yeah. put pa the passionate people yeah. with the talent in the right position. Yeah, and people respect it and that and that has opened the door for this stuff like we would never even even if the the the, the sequel trilogy ended up like kicking it out of the parking the highest course of the movies of all times we would not be seeing all these shows coming out no. yeah. if they had not proven that it's possible oh, 100 percent. and so like everyone's like oh who says star wars it's like jj exactly feige and and, and that <laughs> whole team at marvel saved no. not only star yeah. wars but it's going to save save a yeah. whole generation of, of yeah. nerds and seeing their fandoms yeah. Yeah. come to life in ways that we that would not have been possible otherwise. yeah i'm like so, I, that's I, I, and poloni was part of it too yeah so i, I would say uh just as the last item before we get to the q a uh with you um the other thing that i think uh feige really deserves credit for uh, and but even Feige was never able to accomplish until Filoni and Favreau got into the mix on this was that Feige proved that the live action universe was possible and gave Star Wars the chance but because of all of the groundwork, the years of groundwork that Feige put in now getting to be able to see something like the High Republic, something like uh, what we're seeing with uh, some of the upcoming shows that will also have potentially uh, additional tie-ins in other mediums. Um, that's something that even Marvel hasn't gotten the chance to do, where, uh, while, yeah, the comics have been influenced by the movies, mm -hmm. and character story arcs and development have been influenced by the movies, we haven't really gotten the comics 
uh, like the full series of comics to directly tie into the movies, not like what we're about to get with Star oh, yeah. Wars. Yeah. So the fact that it, if Feige proved that Marvel's universe was possible and gave Star Wars the chance, if Star Wars can prove that this new experiment can work, what other things can we see in nerd uh, media to come out because of that? Disney taking over the damn world. Well, listen, we're all going to be bowing to the mouse at some point. I, I've accepted, <laughs> I accepted that when I was like 10 and he made the best movies ever. Praise and be I to the mouse. Like, yeah, watching the lad. And, and Don't ever question the mouse. Exactly. No, no, no. You're not allowed to question the mouse. There's, there's, there's no such thing as questions. Shouldn't. There's no yeah, such thing as questions. You spend money. You yes, spend money, get yes, product. Yes, sir, That's Mr. Mouse. Works. Yes, sir, there's, Mr. There's no wiggle room on that. Just remember. Don't take a plane trip with Mickey. No, definitely don't. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this uh, this off park means. Hey, on, yeah, on, no, on that horrific <laughs> note, Q and A. Oh yeah. So, uh, do we have any questions over here? Any questions, okay. Richard? Again, thank you, random person. He knew my name. Well, it's okay. I don't, don't know. break the illusion. <laughs> so, um, this question kind of goes to all of you. Um, it's really about in, let's say, the new and the old trilogy. Mm -hmm. What really, like, give me like one thing that like really cheesed you off. Like, for example, like, I, I, I personally think um, back when we got the, you know, like the whole Finn storyline, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, you hear things like. Uh, oh. Oh, anyone can be a foreign sensitive. Right, yeah, stuff like that, right? And then, like, they got uh, the uh, FM2187, mm -hmm. right? And so you go, okay, there's some history there, right? And then you go back to Lay and stuff like that, right? So you go, okay, this character's going to be really big, right? But then it's been two extra movies just, like, really just drowning the character, right? So that's, like, something that's really yeah. killed me. So in that same vein, this question to all of you. Yeah. What really cheated you up? Uh, I would have loved to have seen Finn in, like, some modified Stormtrooper armor with with his own lightsaber. Like, when I saw, when I saw yes, like, the... Yes. the That'd be pretty, 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 yeah. Like, especially, like, when it's like, oh, no, he's playing a Stormtrooper, and then you see him with the lightsaber. Mm. And, like, there was even a thing of John Boyega, like, reacting to the trailer and yeah. flipping out. And yeah. I was just like, I was like, oh, my God, we're going to get a dude in, like, full-on, like, plate mail and yeah. lightsaber, yeah. and it's going to be awesome. And then we didn't get that, and I was just like, this is, it was, it yeah. been, and, yeah. and, and it's like, okay, I can't yeah. complain too hard because I, I was like going all over the place and reaching, but it would have been so nice. Yeah, that, right. that kind of throwback to the uh, the Crimson Empire storyline, uh, aesthetic at least. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, with Finn, there was so much they could have done with uh, his story, and I, I blame Ryan Johnson. Uh, <laughs> nope, nope, nope. I know what your opinions of him are, but no, I. He's I, an amazing director. I, I blame Ryan Johnson for that one. That that story had such a good setup and then got thrown away. So, so, so for me, I guess that goes hand in hand with I guess my biggest problem with the new trilogy, which I I'm sorry, The Force Awakens is an amazing film. It's exactly what Star Wars needed after the prequel trilogy. It Minus needed the Raptors. Well, it needed the magic and the sense of wonder that was Star Wars for a yeah. new generation. Um, but it was a great starting point, and I love Ryan Johnson, like, Brick, Looper, both fantastic films. I've heard Knives Out is amazing. Oh, fantastic. But it's, it's literally sitting on my, it's sitting on my dresser to watch. Um, but Tomorrow. just the fact that we had such an amazing starting point, and then The Last Jedi essentially tried to be its own starting point of its own trilogy. Mm -hmm. Like, it basically took a hard left turn from like, hey, here's where we're going, we're Cruising on the highway, we're going this way with this story, our exit's going to be down there. Wait, why the hell are we taking this exit? Where are we going? Where are you taking me? Mm. Like, it was very much a... And it's, it's you know, people people complained about Disney being too hands-on with Marvel um, before the end of Phase 2, and you saw the reshuffling where basically Kevin Feige was just, here's the check, Kevin, just go do whatever you want. Um, for them to be so hands-off with this trilogy really blows my mind because they really let him do what he wanted and he did some really interesting things that I liked but he also took the story in a completely different direction where you literally handcuffed whoever was coming in to do that third movie. Lyanna originally was Colin Trevorrow and he had his own script Duel of the Fates and it was it took some stuff from the first two and would have basically kind of meshed them into one film 
and Rise of Skywalker really hurt from that because to get back to where you think the origin or the new trilogy was originally going, that would have had to have been like a three and a half hour movie at yeah. best. Well, and, and again, I think that's that's part of the reason, like I, like I said at the beginning when I got on here, was I appreciated the prequels. Yeah. Because as much as people needed to say, Lucas, no, this isn't a good idea on a lot of that stuff. Yeah. He had an idea of of what was going to happen when, what yeah. the story beats were, and like what the whole story of all three movies was going to be. Yeah. And and he, 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 people like to make fun of the like it's like a poem it rhymes, but like he had a plan for the whole poem. Yeah. To begin with, and oh, let yeah, it all yeah. rhyme off each other, and then. And, and, and I don't think it's any like one director's fault. I don't think it's JJ's fault. I don't think I don't think it's anybody's particular fault. No. It just there wasn't a cohesive plan for the right. whole three movies. It was we're gonna let this guy do his thing and this guy do his thing and this guy do his thing and we're gonna hope it works and it didn't. Yep. Which and, is it's it's almost like the Marvel treatment, right? Like you have your own directors doing their own individual stories and they all fit into the bigger universe, but but they this needed one, the Favreau or Feige to be like, no, 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 this is this, exactly like you can you have this much room to play in, but you gotta hit A, B, C, and D. Exactly. Stay yeah, exactly. Yeah, and <laughs> exactly. So yeah, if, if I was disappointed with anything, I, it, it was that, like, yeah, I was gonna say if I want, I want to steal some of those for, to put on camera here. Um, Kyla, Kyla, I swear, if you call Kyla, him, if you call Kyla, him Baby Yoda, Moran, I'm throwing stuff at you. Bring Moran, bring Moran, bring Moran. <laughs> I was wondering if that those people were gonna make name. an appearance. <laughs> It's Baby Yoda! <laughs> it, 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 it's, um, it's adorable stuff that we got this. every day. It's adorable. A little Grogu. He's a backpack. But you can wear him on your back for uh, your foot. I still, like a I, I still, I'm still not calling him that. No, I'm not calling him Baby Yoda. His name, is, his name is Grogu. His name is Grogu, and you do need to acknowledge that. Like, I get that you want to have a nickname for him, but he has not said it's okay for you to call him that. So <laughs> until then, like, he's come to you and said, hey, my name is Grogu, and you're saying, no, screw you, I'm going to call you something else. No, no, no. That's true. He has not it's said, my name is Grogu. That's, Ahsoka I mean, said his name is Grogu. Ahsoka, and she said, at the <laughs> moment he says, my name is Grogu, well, he can't really talk right now. I am Groot uh, kind of thing. <laughs> I'll accept he it. He's literally showing the classic size of trauma going back to a childlike state therefore well, losing his ability well, and to he, until that and he actually responds to the name Grogu <laughs> yeah like, like every, every time, time someone says Grogu he's like huh <laughs> it is the cutest like, reaction to German also, shepherd ears <laughs> what he also responds when uh, Mando calls him uh, the child kid so, no, yeah. kid. no kid because that, kid. that's a nickname he's accepted from his new dad yeah kind of like uh, kind of like Kratos calling him boy yeah boy yeah. Boy. yeah. Listen, if Pedro Pascal comes and calls me kid, I'm on board. <laughs> whatever you need, sir. <laughs> yeah, dude. Whatever you need, whatever you want. Grogu is adorable. Grogu is awesome. He, he, he is absolutely a breath of fresh air that Star Wars needed. To, oh, yeah. To, yeah. to jump people on board of a show that I think, if they like, even if it was 99% the same show, but this guy was not as cute as he was. Well, and that's like, that was the brilliance of it, too, is like... You have it, it's going to be this western in space, and it's going to be like the old spaghetti westerns, and big gunfight at the end of the episode, and then you see this little guy, and you're like, I can't not watch it anymore, <laughs> what the, what? Well, have you, did you see the original drawings of what Grogu was supposed to look like? Uh -huh. He looked like a miniature, like, version of Yoda, like, they made him look older. Like, he doesn't look like a miniature weird. version of Yoda now? No, like, they, 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 they had, they, he, they, he they took he, up the whole, like, the gizmo old, if you took his yeah. fur off. Yeah, uh, they, 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 they like, look like Yoda. Like white, wispy hair, they just, like, oh, okay. They just people. decreased the size on him, like, yeah. three steps. Yeah, like, darker green skin, whatnot, as opposed to that adorable mess. Like they, they made him. Why is he a mess? He's adorable and a mess. Have you not seen him eat macaroons? Like or or, or other living things? That was like the darkest part of that. That was whole show. hilarious. Like you sit there, like he's intelligent enough to know that those are like important. Maybe he doesn't understand like the full concept, but like he understands those are important. And he keeps killing them! They look like Boba. Can you blame him? Who doesn't look like which, Boba? I'm, I'm telling you, if they don't come out uh, as the, the season three finale with him being the secret oh, Sith Lord uh, behind the entire <laughs> uh, sequel trilogy, I, I'm, I'm boycotting. <laughs> That's rough. <sighs> But with that, uh, thank you so much yeah, for no, your time. Thank you very much. We've done it. This we haven't much. usually gone through the questions that have been given. So, all right. Well, then I think definitely uh, not a stock question that we planted. <laughs> uh, well, then uh, should, should, should I leave this guy with you guys? Do you need to? Do you need to yes. hold him for a bit? Yes. Okay. Well, I'll leave you yes. with Grogu. Yeah. What's his name? 
and, and, and I'll leave you with the Grogu hat. There we go. And then uh, I got one of my coworkers who's also been around here for quite some time, mm -hmm. uh, Logan. He is a... Uh, He's definitely one of the other guys who knows just about everything about the, th the store. Okay. And, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I saw that too. It was like, uh oh. You saw nothing. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Yeah, so uh, I'll hand it off to Logan and uh, thanks for having me, guys. Thank that you, was sir. a lot of fun. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Louder! So <laughs> you bastards. Hey, hey. Hello. How are we doing today? Doing pretty good. Good, good. Well, it's a tough act to see you again. Yeah. <laughs> good to see you too. Yeah. No, that's just up to the, bring your A game. That's all. <laughs> that's yeah. all I got. Okay. <laughs> all right. Ugh. So, Logan, yeah. hear that you are the guy to talk to about comics and board games, and um, and tabletop. Uh, less comic books, but more board games and like the toys, collectibles, Gundam uh, stuff. Speaking uh, of Gundam, it looks like you brought some some goodies. I brought a couple things just to we're kind of picked over at the moment because the holiday sale and everything. But I just yeah. brought a couple things because if anyone had any questions or I can show you kind of the entry points. So are do you? I mean, I'm assuming you actually keep up with the Gundam lore itself as well, or are you just like these are pretty. Um, there's well, yeah, yes and no. Okay. Um, the Gundam lore there's it's worse than Star Wars. Yes. Because <laughs> um, you have a. Is it worse than Fate Zero? I think it set the bar. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you have the main Gundam universe, which is called Universal Century, and then you'll be watching something like, wait, that didn't happen in this at all. And then you find out you're watching a completely different alternate universe timeline right. of the same show that you're watching. And there's no real indicator of what you're watching. Uh, oh, that sounds super um, helpful. Yeah. Um, but there's like Universal Century, Calamity Central, Col Colony Century, stuff like that. Um, so which one does Gundam Wing fall under? Uh, it's actually in its own little pocket. It's uh, the After Colony storyline. Okay. Which uh, one does G Gundam fall under? That I don't know. Because huh. G Gundam, I never really got down that rabbit hole, even though it's just fantastic. Like it was, some of the was, weirdest robots that you've ever seen yes. come out of G Gundam. Um, what? What? Losers. I, 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 if, if you've never seen G Gundam... Google G Gundam Mechs and look till you find the one that's the giant rattlesnake mech with the sombrero. Yep. It's, um, it's still one of those where yeah. some of the animes I've seen. Where you want the cute girl turning into the mech. So I mean. Yeah. Well, then you had yeah. like you had like unicorn Gundam. You had pocket Gundam, which they're like little chibi Gundams yeah. running around. I'm like, what the um, hell? And like unicorn Gundams out of actually the, the franchise I followed most, of, most, which is Universal Century. Okay. Um, that was the original. It's the longest running. Has the most content for it. And that's the one that the original Mobile Suit Gundam. Yes, the original Mobile Suit Gundam. From like the 70s or 80s? Uh, 76, I think. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, but I got a couple of things. Like we have... So what we got? Just a couple, like, we don't have a lot on the shelf, but I have a couple high-grade kits, just some more of the iconic. Okay. Um, this is... Who's this guy? The uh, RX... I'm bad at number, remembering them. This is 78 GPO 2A. Now, which series um, is this from? This... So you have the original series. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Dude, I, I, um, you've seen me with pops. And then there would a, probably be worse with these. There's a couple little series after, and this happens in Stargazer where you have the Republic of Xeon captured one of the two prototypes, and this is the one that they technically captured. Okay. That they literally, like, if you look at it, it's swollen to the gills with armor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they threw all of their tech on it to have a, a massive weapons platform to attack back. Mm -hmm. um, it's really just a, a, basically, it's either three episodes or one big long movie. Okay. Um, it's super space opery. It's super good. Okay. Um, and it's just one of the more iconic ones from the history. Um, now, what are these guys called? Uh, these actual figures. Uh, Gundams. Or gu they're Gundams, or they're called Gunpla as a hobby because Gundam Gunpla stands for uh, Gundam Plastic Model Play. Yeah. Got it. Japan okay. just abbrevi abbreviated it. Okay. So Gunpla. Everything Gunpla. Has Gunpla. Gunpla. Everyone okay. has an abbreviation. And these okay. are just a couple iconic kits that I really enjoy. Like I built both of these. Okay. Um, How long did each one of them take? This one took about two hours. Um, another whole other hour over doing like the decals and stuff, which I hate doing because I have giant man hands yeah. um, or ham hocks, whatever you want to call these things. <laughs> Frying pans. Frying pans, yep. yeah. Um, this one took considerably less. Mm -hmm. uh, I really like this one. It's based off the ARC 178-2 okay. frame. 
Um, but they added a couple things to it and just made it a really beautiful little kit to build. So how, I guess, how extensive is the building process for these? Like, I mean, are they like literally piece by piece by piece by piece? Uh, or are they in like bigger pieces and they're a little bit easier to put together? You haven't looked inside the box, have you? I have not. Um, they can be a little intimidating. <laughs> I, I don't know how to get these bands That's back on. That's one way to put it. Um, it's, it's a little bit of both. Um, okay. Oh, so sweet hell. You're going to have, <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have this little uh, <laughs> screw pieces here. Okay. And that's going to be all the little rubber caps that go inside the jointing so it can actually be posable. Okay. And then, like, if you're looking here, this part here is like the end of the shield. Yeah. So you have some small pieces and yeah. some larger pieces. Like, you, you go through and you, like, break um, off the plastic pieces. Oh, wow, yeah. yeah. You, like, you get real in-depth with it. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's not any more difficult than building, like, World War II uh, models model kits like yeah. uh, I originally got into model building back when I was probably 11 or 12 building um, World War II airplanes yeah. oh, okay. um, Spitfire oh, stuff like that cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I just thought they were really cool and Life then size, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then being the dumb little kid I was, it's like, cool, let's load it up with firecrackers. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. As you do. Hey, you're, you're yeah. trying to be realistic, um, okay? Um, <laughs> the really cool thing is uh, I got into Gundams. I grew up on the West Coast originally, so I had a lot more exposure to... Um, um, outside? Yeah. Outside, <laughs> and then uh, the, I grew up in technically the northwest section of Eugene, Oregon. Oh, okay. And we had basically it was called Little Japan just north of us. Oh, very cool. So if you knew what channels to tune into, you could watch uh, <gasps> anime, you could watch Japanese TV drama. Uh, cool. If you knew where to shop, you could actually buy Gundams in the little Japanese mm -hmm. convenience stores. Okay. okay. Um, but um, kind of shows you what it looks like all simple. Yeah. Um, but the great thing is the kits, the instructions, while they look crazy. Oh, wow, yes, they do. There's no real language to it. It's just step one. Put yep. piece A with piece B. And oh, they took the Lego route then? Yeah, they yeah. took the Lego route. Yep. And depending on which version of that, you got the uh, the snap or the glue. So Almost all of the current model, Gundam model kits are all snap. Okay. Really? Even the, the bigger kits. They're being that nice to, to yeah. people now. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, the big thing is they the the customizing side of the hobby is ah. insane so being able to build something then take it back apart and then customize those pieces oh, and put okay. it back together so you have your then custom built Gundam yeah gotcha okay um, that makes sense. kind of became a big deal and like even the bigger higher grade kits like this this guy here is all going to be snapped together all right let, let, let's show that on the screen oh, oh, that's good uh, grief that oh. is gigantic yeah. yeah what's that one called this is the crossbones it comes out of its own little movie by a similar name um, basically, if you ever wanted to see what happens when you get pirates in Gundam, that's this guy here. Oh, wow. Um, I, I feel like that's I a must. Like Mike's Got it? Like, like, little metal like, heart is like starting to burn. Little scroll and cross. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chest. That's hilarious, actually, so. yeah. We're just getting ideas for DC characters. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, that one drew, drew a little bit from the Captain Harlock kind of storylines where you had space pirates and the army and the pirates weren't necessarily good, weren't necessarily bad. They were just pirates. They're just. Pir yeah, pirates doing their own thing. Yeah, just being pirates. Um, but no, it's one of those things. I I grew up um, West Coast. I have a, gotten to board gaming at the age of eight when Hero Quest came out. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. And it was all downhill from there. <laughs> um, got uh, just into it from there. I don't know if any questions or where you want to go. Or... Yeah, actually, uh, we just got one uh, online to, that feels very appropriate. All right. Uh, what has been your favorite game to play during quarantine? Um, so during quarantine, favorite game for me um, has been a little tile place game from Z-Man Games called Akra Okay. Okay. Um, it's just me and the wife at home most days. Um, because if I work here, I try not to, to socialize too much outside right. of work because sure. you know. I come into contact with so many people here. Um, so it's just lots of two-player, and it's been... Uh, Acroteria is just a little two-player. You're playing is basically Spanish uh, explorers, and you're somewhere in Central South America, okay. and you're trying to find the different trade cities, and you're trying to find gold and, and stuff to take back to the old world with you. Nice. Okay. Uh, That's actually kind of cool. You yeah. Tile placing, kind of like a. Kind of like a car more like, like Carcassonne. Okay. And you place the tiles, and then you explore the tiles. Okay. Got it. Cool. Um, Interesting. It's a lot of fun. And then the other one, me and the wife have enjoyed a lot, is a game called Dice Forge. 
and it's a dice game that feels more like a deck builder okay. because you have two dice and every turn you're changing the sides out on it, you're rolling those dice so many times it just feels like you're drawing cards for resources. Interesting. Which, I mean, speaking of dice, the, uh, the, the dice selection that you guys have here is, uh, I, I think calling it impressive may be a, a bit of an understatement. Uh, <laughs> having done some travel, I've never quite seen a store with a selection quite like it. Yeah. Um, outside of trade shows. Yeah. 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 Um, it I is. Online specialty shop. It yeah. almost be intimidating. Yeah. Dies, like. yeah. <laughs> the last year we took it from being just two main product lines, which were the Kaplow dice and the Chessex dice, mm. okay. and we added metal gaming dice into it. We added the Nordic Forge metal dice to it, and the Gemstone dice, oh, uh, serious dice. Like it's, I, I was like, cool. Wait, what? <laughs> Pretty math rock, go click clack one. Yep, 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 definitely. That's actually very poignant, yes. No. Way more poetic than I could make it. Exactly. It's, there are definitely days where it's like, oh, the dice goblins are here. <laughs> and it's just fun to watch them. <laughs> fun to watch them dig and be excited about, oh, I found the one, you know? Um, okay, so in the fairness, rule them all? Well, have yeah, all not pretty much. <laughs> oh no, I, I, I lost it. Okay. Uh, yeah, no. Ooh. Dice goblin, dice hoarders, dice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Dice whores. Me. <laughs> so like, uh, we've they, got uh, one over here that has a. It, it is impressive. Yeah, it is yeah. impressive uh, how many options exist out there. And in fairness, if you do have a very specific look you're going for with your dice, it helps to have some a variety to choose from because i mean especially uh, when you get in the metal dice yeah it, like even something as simple as like for uh me I, I was trying to go for like a nice dark royal blue with uh silver uh outlines for uh the dice turns out that was one of the hardest combinations to actually find of like that proper uh yeah. coloring yeah and so yeah the the metal especially being able to have something to even start with is awesome to be able to uh, have as yeah. many as you guys like do. Is that stuff that you guys can special order? Not so much. It's 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 like through Metal Gaming Dice okay. and through uh, uh, Nor uh, Norse Foundry. Mm -hmm. They're both uh, two dice companies that specialize in doing metal dice. Mm -hmm. Now let's rewind. Let's go back five years. Yep. Uh, five years ago, if you wanted metal dice, your pretty much options were they're all straight edge, straight sided, engraved. And you got silver, matte silver, sharp. gold, bronze, yeah, and sharp uh, <laughs> bronze, and maybe a gunmetal or no, steel. Mm -hmm. And that was five years ago, and that was pretty much your entire option. Sure. Mm -hmm. and they were only um, like 60 bucks a set. 60, 75 cool. bucks. Um, this last year, because there's been so much mania behind, well, metal, metal dice roll better, and there's nothing really to prove that. Hmm. Um, they roll better, they look better, they're more prestigious, or as a DM from the standpoint, it's like, cool, I have my screen up, I'm going to grab my, my, my metal dice and roll my metal dice, and you're just going here, thud, 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 thud. That's the intimidation add to, add factor. To the, to the drama of the roll. Yeah. yeah. I like dice that light up because you don't know what it lit up on, and uh, you just see yeah. my face going red, and you're just like, <laughs> um, So there's a whole thing, about, the last couple of years they've become huge. Mm -hmm. And with Metal Gaming Dice mm -hmm. and Nordic War, they're engraved dice. There's um, more designs, more colors, there's different colors coming out. There's actually, uh, Nordic, uh, Norse Foundry did a series that we carry, and they're, uh, Aircraft grade aluminum dice that have the splatter patterned uh, anodized ceramic coating on them that are scratch resistant and chip resistant. Okay. Um, and for them to put a coating on that, that's like, that's really neat. Yeah. So you get these dice that have a lot more personality to them. We had one set that was kind of a gunmetal dye color. Okay. But it had this crimson splatter on it, so it looked like they were blood splatter dice. That's dope. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, that's um, really dope, actually. But yeah, it's, it's in the last couple of years, like, I remember I first played Dungeons and Dragons when I was eight years old, mm -hmm. and it was double whammy in 89, because I got Hero Quest earlier in the year, mm -hmm. and really got into that, and my brothers at the time were just getting into Dungeons and Dragons, and my brothers were six and a half years older. Oh, okay, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, so you got to play with the big kids. I got to play with the big kids. I was super thrilled. Yeah. Um, they're How often big, were you creating a new character sheet playing with the big kids? <laughs> I, at, at that point, I wasn't creating my own characters. Okay. Um, okay. I was giving eight, you the hand over. I was eight years old. They were having a hard time getting their friends, because I think they were in middle school at the time, yeah. over on a regular basis. So like, hey, you play Hero Quest. You're eight years old. You could probably play a barbarian. 
<laughs> um, just go whack stuff. Just go whack stuff. So yeah, I played the barbarian and there. Take half damage. Go hit things. Yep. And the first <laughs> campaign I got into was uh, Expedition to Ravenloft. Um, so I was sitting there. It's like, this is scary. I'm going to hit it with the axe. You know. Um, Swing hard. <laughs> yep. Um, and that it was. That was the start of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons regularly ever since. Very cool. Nice. And so more of these guys, because I'm actually very fascinated yeah. by these guys. So on these guys, um, I guess, what is the general, I guess, availability for something like these? Because you see them, like, because I'm seeing them pop up more and more. I mean, like, is this something that, like, I can go in and I'm literally going to be able to just, like, pick one from any series that they've ever done, or is it like they only make them for, like, certain series of Gundam, or like... Um, yes, no. Uh -huh. um, so when you get a new series that's out, mm -hmm. they're going to market it hard, you're going to get a whole line of Gundams from that series. Mm -hmm. um, they're usually going to have some special identifier on their box, okay. and I don't have one of those, I didn't grab one that was like that. Um, Which one do you want? Um, yeah. Any of the ones with the really bright weird logo work on the front, the, the top corner. Mm. Like um, kind, of, kind of like this. This one is going to be uh, a master grade. So okay. there's different grades. You have the high grade, yeah. and high grades are going to be about six to yeah. seven inches tall once they're built, kind of like an GI Joe action figure. Your master grades are going to be anywhere from eight inches to ten inches tall. Okay. Uh, so it's a scale. Okay. So also master grade and high grade to, to know which one's harder to put together. <laughs> I will make a yes. Um, which one's harder? With an asterisk because it's less about being more difficult to build, but being more complex. Sure. Mm. Like this guy's going to have a whole internal skeleton, whereas that guy's just going to be pieces this of shell. shell. Yeah. Yes, this will be a good example. Okay. Nice. What do we got? So this is technically not a Gundam, but it's going to work. You're going to see like the logoing for the series it's from in the top corner. Okay. Whereas this guy, you're just going to see the general. It's your general name. Yeah. And if you flip to the corner, it's going to be the high-grade kit number 069. Okay. Uh, that's 066. Okay. And Go so, ahead. say, four or five model kits from this line maintain their popularity and become super popular or iconic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Once they discontinue this line here, yeah. or this line here, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. they'll then archive it either into the gold series or into a silver series. And those are going to be regularly reprinted throughout the rest of the lifespan of the... the, the Gundam. God, okay. Now, uh, is it kind of like a, a comic book reprint where it's exactly the same thing, just, you know, di uh, different uh, year that it was made, or is there anything that is different about the, the remakes uh, once they get to that status versus the first run of them? So, usually, yeah, he, he, this is even a better example. Okay. Because um, this is actually Gundam. You're going to have the whole series there up in the corner. Nice. Um, oh, yeah, 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 okay. That's build divers or build fighters. Okay. Um, that little guy right Super there. popular on, on YouTube of all places. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like people like putting them together? Uh, no, uh, they actually, instead of putting that series onto like Funimation or Crunchyroll or a cable channel, they just dropped it straight onto YouTube. Oh, no kidding. Huh. Yeah. Neat. Interesting. Um, so when they go to reprint it into this, it will be the exact same kit. The usual only difference is, as the years have gone by, the plastics have gotten better. Okay. Okay. Um, but so, it, like, more durable, like, easier to put together? More like durable, better fitting, easier okay. to put together, better uh, color quality. Okay. Um, nice. Going back uh, 15, 20 years, uh, it wasn't uncommon to buy a Gundam kit, and you'd have a nice big piece like this, and you would see lines in it from where the injection happened, those two uh, bits of plastic met. And you, yep. Uh, it's terrible. I had the newer ones, is quite a bit growing. Um, they're a lot more smooth, a lot more even. Got it. Uh, it's okay. better durability. They don't crack as easy. Um, I'm gonna try to pop those out sometime this week. Good. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then on these guys, so these are all pretty, pretty in depth, but they're all pre-colored. Like, do they have ones where you actually do the painting yourself after putting together or while putting together? Um, at the moment, not that. Okay, so they haven't gone that yeah. in depth with them. Not, not, okay. not that in depth. Um, it's not uncommon to see someone grab a kit like this and go, cool, I want it to be uh, Sailor Moon themed or Miku themed or some type of G.I. Joe or something. So they'll prime it okay. um, and repaint it how they want it painted. <laughs> That's kind of dope. Okay. Um, 
and you have kit bashing, which kind of universal term where it's like, cool, I'll take three or four kits. I want the legs off this one, the head off this one, the wings off that one, and build, and then they'll repaint, and there's their, their custom mech. Um, are, they, are the pieces pretty interchangeable from kit to kit to kit with these guys? Uh, the point so that you can do that? Yes, actually okay. they're getting that way. Like most of the high grade kits use similar jointing in the, the mm -hmm. knees, the waist, the elbows. Okay. So it's really easy just to swap out like the forearm or the upper arm or the legs. <laughs> okay. Very interesting. Yeah. Huh. I like it. Um, one of the things we're talking about kit bashing and stuff, um, <laughs> it's not technically Gundam. Mm -hmm. It's still made by the Bandai, yeah. Yeah. Um, they've come out with what they call 30-minute missions. Okay. And these are literally kits that are meant to be designed, if you've never built Gundam before, you should be able to pop it open. I can't see you. Um, uh, that's fine. How about look at the instructions and build it in about 30 minutes. Yep, that. Okay. Uh, my first time building one, it took about 40 minutes. My second time building one took about 20 minutes. Okay. Um, and these are literally designed so that everything is modular, universally modular. Um, so it is designed to literally like take multiple kits. Oh wow! And yeah, just yeah. Uh, blend them together and however you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and in that Japan really right now, cool. they're working on a tabletop game for these, where everything's point based and you play skirmishes with them. Ooh, oh, that would be um, fun. So it's 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 a neat one. Yeah. Um, and if you're wanting to, wanting to get into the hobby, wanting to give it a try, uh, the thirty minute mission kits are a phenomenal start point mm -hmm. um, because it's we're seeing here they're about half the price of any other kit you'll find. Yeah. Um, so it makes them significantly more affordable, easier to get into, and they're an easier entry point. Okay. okay. Nice. Um, and all the iconography and the instructions is the same iconography. Yeah. So. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. So we are coming up uh, close to that uh, uh, fabled two hour mark that is usually only when uh, our buddy David comes on to the show. Uh, so, uh, so let's talk let's for 45 ahead. more minutes. All right, what do we have? <laughs> to jump into some a little Q and A. Yeah, so uh, are you or the are you the board game whisperer? Yes, that's that's actually yes. what I was going to bring up. So, so I, I've been I've been told that I have to refer to you as the board game whisperer. You don't have to. No, that's, that's, that's what that's what he told me. Uh, that's it, Tom. So She's requiring not all of his so, ideas I mean, are good right. ideas. Yeah. <laughs> so oh. I was going to say, could you potentially make a board game suggestion for Mike here to see if I can convince him to play something with me? All right, because I don't want to have to spend more time with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lie. Noted. Uh, poisoning your breakfast tomorrow morning. Hope you enjoy that meal. <laughs> <laughs> Always check your salsa. normal cooking is like poison anyway. So That's why you devour all of my food. <laughs> I made you a whole day, yeah, I burned myself dang. for you for a whole day pancake. <laughs> I didn't tell you to burn yourself for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you like my food. Nah, it's, it's okay. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> so yeah. yes, is there is there a board game that you could suggest? Well, uh, like the weird thing is, like so I can suggest I can board games for all days, but the question is going to be: Do y'all play any board games already? No. no. Do y'all play any video games? Yes. There's a ton of them. What <laughs> kind of video games do you like? Uh, I am a mixture of RPG, sports games, turn uh, turn based RPGs. Sorry, sports game shooters. Um, Anything oh, else in between? Uh, Action adventure yeah. for. So, I mean, I play a lot of other things too. So, I mean, it's mostly trying to find something that he would play. Like, I like to play, like, like I play World of Warcraft. Like, I'm an okay. officer in my guild. Like, shooter games with him. Also, Slice of Life games. Like, just restarting my island and passing yesterday. So. Ooh, that's rough to restart your island. It was, it was. It, she hadn't touched it in like months. Gotcha. I haven't touched it in about five um, months. So, I was um, like, let's start a whole new Do you have island. any really good murder mysteries that aren't like Clue? At the moment, again, because of the sale, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. no, I don't. Are there ones that you could recommend? Um, there's one that's going to be cooperative, well, semi-cooperative. You need more than just the two of you, which is going to be kind of a downer for me right now. Uh, but it's Deception, Murder, in Hong Kong. Oh, okay. And it's one of those, you don't know who did it. You are all bystanders at some event. Like, the, the initial thing is you're in a tram car mm -hmm. going from the top of Mount Fiji <laughs> back down into the town. Stuff happens, someone dies, and you know it was someone that was on the tram car, okay. but you don't know who did it. That's not a murder mystery, I just everyone, <laughs> everyone has their own little sheets and checklists. Okay. The person that did it knows that they did it. So and one of the players is in fact the killer. Is in fact the killer. Okay. And while everyone's asking questions and taking actions to try and deduce who did what, what motives were, sure. and stuff like that, and check things off your checklist, yeah. they're actively going around trying to ask the questions to throw shade, make it look like it wasn't them, 
even to the point where there's certain actions that they can take to foul up the evidence if they get the opportunity. Oh, that sounds so fun. So it's uh, Among Us. <laughs> it's yes. See, I was about to it say that. It is Among Us as a murder mystery game. Uh, what is this game? Uh, Deception, murder in Hong Kong. That sounds super fun. Um, now that being said, you're going to have in that same vein of social deduction games, you're going to have like The Resistance and Werewolf. Okay. But if you're looking for specifically that murder mystery kind of thing, yeah. that one really captures that feel. What is the the fewest amount of players that you can play and still have like a thoroughly enjoyable experience? On that one, I'd say five. Okay. Yeah, that, that's going to be the... whole apartment full of people. Um, Let's go. Yeah. Now that being said, if it's just the two of you and you want a really good time solving a murder... Mm -hmm. um, just go commit one? <laughs> anyway, when you're solving it, then... I <laughs> could not recommend that one. Mm -hmm. um, it's Chronicles of Crime. Okay. Um, I think we have it. He's going to go check. Do you? Okay, um, we'll, buy it. we'll buy it today. It yeah. is <laughs> a cooperative game. Okay. Um, and it's kind of a misnomer because it is a board game, but it is also a phone game. All the cards have little QRs on them. You'll oh. get your case file, and it's like murder was conducted so and so location. This is what happened, and you are working as the detective and the investigator to go around, round up your suspects, at, scan the cards, ask the questions into the app. That kind of sounds dope. Huh. Get your clues together, and then once you get enough stuff, submit to the game. Hey, so and so did it. Here's our proof. Um, Very interesting. How long does a game of that usually last? Um, the first time I played it, it took me and my wife seven hours to figure it out. Um, that's because we kept Jesus. asking the wrong questions. Uh, um, and so that, you were like Detective Spooner and I, Robot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, yes. Um, but I don't think he found it, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but the really cool thing about it is you download an app, and the app comes with like seven free um, cases, mm -hmm. and okay. you can replay the same case a couple of times because it will randomize some of the variables. That's okay. kind of cool. Um, but they've also come out with expansions, like there's one that's basically you're playing, same, same cards, same stuff, but mm -hmm. you're playing London 1952, so it's... You're Ooh. playing Scotland Yard. There's another one that is a crime noir where you're America, 1940s. Suddenly, I have them excited and um, so thrilled. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really good. It's great as it, because it's cooperative. So you're not playing against each other. You're playing with each other, cooperatively yeah. with each other. And, and is that is that two only, or can you play with like you three can or play four people? Three, four, five, six. The more people you get, the weirder it gets, though, because it's all of a sudden you're playing a committee of investigators. Uh, too many cooks in the kitchen is what I'm hearing. Yeah, <laughs> but, 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 but two to four players on that one's phenomenal. Nice. Or an inspector's face time in his console, Reggie. Uh, okay. um, the big thing right now is, other than the how to host a murder dinner parties, a lot of the murder investigation games, especially with uh, everyone kind of playing within their own family groups or mm -hmm. house groups, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. those have been really popular because most of them are cooperative. Okay. Right. Nice. Okay. Which I think might be better because yeah. you know, I get too competitive even when playing things like Mario Kart. I don't ever get competitive. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, you guys did not have it, right? No. We need to look. Can you order it? We'll do that before we leave. Yeah. Right. So uh, we do have a question from some mysterious person online. Who knew? Uh, <laughs> asking. Uh, <laughs> Someone just got thrown under a bus and I didn't know who. That one. D&D, &D, <laughs> online in person. Well, uh, online right now, but I miss in person so much. Do you have, uh, do you, aside from the uh, the lack of the uh, direct interaction uh, that online gives you, uh, do you feel like the in, uh, in person has any other advantages to the online? Body language? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There are definitely things that happen around a, a table where you can, uh, read off people's moods, like someone's doing the head nod, like, hey, you need to do the thing. Mm -hmm. Though, the great thing with doing it online is you can open up the, the group chat here for Discord, mm -hmm. and you can be talking, you can shoot someone a message like, hey, what about this? Yeah. And the DM has no idea. Yeah. I know, trust me. Um, I'm the and, DM for the group. And, and the then the DM can We don't ever <laughs> send messages that you're not yeah. a part of. So <laughs> the DM can do the same, like, hey, you need to make a... Will saving throw, don't tell the group. You know, okay. it's just one of those things where, okay. I've done that a couple times. Yeah. yeah, like actually, um, in, our, in our last one, she's like, everybody make a uh, an investigation, or a perception. Yeah. Yeah, but everyone's perception like, check. 
okay, yeah. I need to message. And then she's like, okay. And then I see, like, is typing to me specifically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then she's just like, did you get that? And I was like, I specifically sure. Called, like, each person who passed perception check, like, they each saw something very specific, but only one thing was actually useful. Right. right. So I have been in the same game with the same group of guys now for five years. Nice. And we've only missed a handful of Mondays in that five years. Um, and this year was one of the ones where with a couple different changes, it's D and D's been usually three out of the four in a month, mm-hmm. and then that fourth one ends up being like, cool, we're going to play board games or other things over Steam. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, oh, Tom Sim. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's 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 one of those things. I just miss hanging out with the the guys in real life. Um, it is one of those things where when uh, things yes, close up. The first time, uh, I don't know how much we want to touch on COVID or anything, yeah. but we literally watched as the D&D community here uh, continued playing multiple in-person, house-to-house session games. Awesome. And then COVID just spread mm-hmm. through that community mm-hmm. so fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, this is... It sucks, man. It yeah, really it does. Which yeah. I will say, that is one of the nice things about uh, how much like video conferencing has uh, been able to expand and be uh, more uh, easily accessible yeah, yeah. Uh, is that it does give you more options to be able to do this and whether you're trying to do that through like discord or you know uh, Skype zoom teams whatever uh, is Skype yeah. still a thing yeah Sometimes. okay okay so it turns out it actually uh, works Easier for uh, you know, bringing in remote uh, additional guests for uh, streaming. Okay, it, it, it's uh, kinder for live stream bandwidth. So I will say, <laughs> but I yeah, will say no, I, it's it, it does yeah. give more options there, not just for like the screen, but for the ways you can interact. So that oh, that's really cool there. there. Yeah, I will say, I think my favorite meme to come out of this whole horrible ordeal is like there will never be a snow day ever again yeah <laughs> no there will be no there won't be because kids will just be on don't Zoom. take that from me i'm, I'm the teacher <laughs> do not take snow days from me. like this generation the generations moving forward will never know the joy of waking up seeing snow on the ground and saying school canceled let's go it's just going to be up oh, log into your first class in the next 20 minutes so being that kid that grew up on the west coast mm-hmm. like my first year here in texas it was the oh it's snowing get dressed was off to school. Yep. Mom dropped me off at school. Where is everyone? I mean, it was it was. Yeah. Maybe like half an inch of you. Know. Not even that. It was like <laughs> just just lightly frosted. I'm like, what's going <laughs> on? Dusting. A dusting. A dusting. Yeah. And Dude, I honestly, had no idea. And I had yeah. to walk back home. I grew up in Vermont. Like it was literally like if there's not two feet, your asses are going to be in class. And, yeah. And, yeah. Like that's that's the the one thing you have to realize if you are not originally from Texas is. Texans will, uh, we will make a big deal about how great we are about so many things, but the one thing that there's not one of us that uh, will, will deny being massive wusses on is that if something frozen falls from the sky, everything hey. ends. Yeah. I will deny that one. And what is this sorcery? <laughs> <laughs> hard water, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, no, hard water is what you get in mineral wells. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. <laughs> He's not wrong. God, on that note. <laughs> uh, oh, um, I have one more. I guess, well, yes. since you do play D&D, like, religiously, do you have a favorite moment that's happened during quarantine in your D&D group? Uh, we were playing Out of the Abyss, and we'd taken the story just a little bit sideways, and we were going through a drought camp. <laughs> As you do. And... Our DM, for some reason, thought it would be great for the drow to have an imprisoned gelatinous cube amongst all the stuff that they had imprisoned. And so Out of the Abyss um, plays heavily off of elements from Alice in Wonderland. Oh, yeah. Okay. And there's these mushrooms. This is the one that we were going to play with Beckett. The one I suggested we play with Beckett. Got it. We just haven't gotten into it yet. Mushrooms that you can eat that change mm-hmm. your size. Yep. And I, had, I asked a question about, do those work on anything that can eat mushrooms? Oh no. Oh, sweet. And the GM looked and he's like, yeah, yeah, they do. And so it's like, cool, hey, rogue, or whoever had the, it was the rogue that had the bow and arrow. Tie this to your bow and arrow and shoot the gelatinous cube with it. Um, oh, so God. in a cave environment, we had a tap of the 50 foot gelatinous cube and it was great. It's already big. Like. Yeah. 
That's not big enough for his liking, apparently. <laughs> that's, what, that I, that's what I made y'all fight by the way. That yeah. Had the talking, it was a gelatinous cube. Yeah. yeah, that had the talking sword in it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah all different groups, right? <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, <laughs> we yeah, it, 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 it took what should have been a really, really difficult encounter and turned it into this weird, cool, I did the thing, we're running for our lives, we don't have to fight the drow anymore, Scooby-Doo moment. <laughs> oh, yeah. That makes me cry so much. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh, that's that's been one of the more fun. <gasps> that's hilarious. Yeah. That's amazing. That's pretty good. <sighs> well, with that, uh, indeed, guys, thank you for sticking around as long as you have. Uh, live and online, we appreciate all of you. Remember, um, we like to think this is a marathon, not a sprint. It's like baseball. <laughs> if we come in under two and a half hours, we did something wrong. <laughs> but I, I will say, uh, like we said at the very beginning of this, um, if you have not had a chance to come out to Madness before, if uh, you've never heard of Madness, uh, but Shame you are on you. local to North Texas, um, this is absolutely a place that you need to check out, whether you consider yourself to be a hardcore nerd already, uh, maybe, uh, you know, a, a kind of a baby nerd, or just nerd curious. Uh, they, they've got a good introduction for you. It's a term. It's a term. If you remember, I coined it, like, last December. <laughs> or yeah, curious. One of the, two. the question is, does anyone other than him use it? No. <laughs> yeah, but it's not a term. Thank and you. yet, <laughs> it, always yeah, gets no. a, it always gets a reaction, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, but uh, honestly, it, this is a great place to come check out. The, uh, the staff is amazing. We'll be able to answer whatever questions you have, probably. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully. We will do our best. <laughs> And uh, it will definitely uh, be a great resource to be able to get you into stuff, be able to uh, get you to try some new things, find whatever you're looking for. Uh, definitely worth your time. Um, just remember, it is you know more or less uh, kind of hidden here in the middle of Plano. So you know if you're not familiar with the area, Google it. Hey, just Mike, if just you're do it. To your, uh, uh, left, you can see the address. Ta-da! That's cute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, of course they are also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, and of course, you know, their website. MySpace? He is talking for MySpace, right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh my what? <laughs> <laughs> but seriously guys, uh You do look you a little not... different not standing in front of that dry erase board. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, if you if you haven't come out here, uh, do it. It's amazing. Um, Quit yeah. being lazy. Get out and do it. Yeah. But, but remember. Exactly with mask. But mm-hmm. remember, mask. Mm-hmm. Social distance. Mm-hmm. Be nice. Be safe. This is 2021. We will do better. Just seriously. Not wood. Damn it. Yeah. I mean, you are the one. Yeah, that's what I'm like. Anyway, uh, but guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um, As always, uh, the uh, same shilling as the beginning of the show. If you have not already, please don't forget to like our video and follow us over on Facebook. Like the video and subscribe over on YouTube because, you know, the Google overlords demand it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you like our stuff but don't always have time for the videos, you can find the audio for our interviews and live shows over on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcast, and Stitcher because we are all the places, all the time, just for you. Tinder? Uh, not me. No? I got a kid. And a wife. But, and? And another kid coming. And? <laughs> uh, but seriously guys thank you so much and of course don't forget to follow Madness all the places it, they're awesome uh, their YouTube video is really fun and of course you know uh, if you get the chance to be able to come by for one of their signings or when it is safe one of their big events um, totally worth your time yep. so thank you again for having us yeah, thank, thank you for you having for, us thank, thank you for, for being coming. on with yeah. us this was a yeah. lot of fun uh, very educational yep um not so much from you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, seriously, with that, uh, as always, I'm Brad, this is Mike, and this is... I'm Logan. Logan from Madness, Tom, and... Kevin. Kevin somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere lurking <laughs> in the shadows. 
But seriously, guys, thank you. And until next time, see ya.